Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, another edition of Bottom of the Bill. We got our boy Steve Honig on today. What's going on, guys? This is going to be a fun one for sure. Good to see you. Uh, <laughs> could be. <laughs> could be. Yeah, this could, this could go a lot of different directions, actually. Uh, before we get started, let's do our obligatory cheers. Oh, yeah. Cheers, boys. We're drinking cheers. margaritas today. We're drinking mm-hmm. margaritas first on the show, actually. By request. Yeah, by request. Steve's a fancy guy. Yeah, you asked us to get... Tequila well, and ginger ale. Yeah, well, ginger ale was just a side. I had really bad ADD earlier, so I was just thinking of like some Something some soda funny. that I could drink. That one messed me up. Did so you bad. think we we're just gonna do tequila shots? Yeah. <laughs> I figured. I figured if we were having me, we'd just go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> just crazy. go full ham. Well, we could go, we could line them up if you wanted no, to. No. I guess you know. We could, I, I mean, there's things to do later. This I, had, week. I had some margar- <laughs> some margarita <laughs> mix in the fridge, and it apparently just, just never goes bad. No, there's so much sugar. I don't. I don't think anything can survive in it. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess that's what it is. Yeah. Well, it's very uh, sure. right. uh, before we get started, I just want to give a shout out to all of our sponsors, uh, Spliffs Downtown, uh, Wicked Barley over in Mandarin, Brewery, brewery uh, Brews Riverside, Harleston Scotch, uh, Sidecar over in San Marco, Captain Jack's Smokehouse, Blue Jay Listening Room out at the beach is our, our newest sponsor. We're very yeah, excited yeah, to be working with go. them. So yeah, it's, you wore it's, a shirt a couple times. I wore the shirt, yeah, and yeah. you know, Kara's 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 was like one of the first guests we had on here. I think. Yeah, she's uh, good. she's super first cool. First legit dude. guest, anyways. Yeah, yeah. I, I first legit him. guest. That what yeah. you said. And then just stared at him, but he's like, <laughs> <laughs> "Just kidding, um, Steve. Relax." What? And then uh, a couple kids hanging out. That's all uh, it is. That's all it is. <laughs> we got a uh, one show to promote coming up. Uh, 1904 Music Hall, November 21st. We'll be playing. We're adding another band to that bill. I'm still trying to figure out who's going to be on it, but it's going to be a good show. So make sure you get your tickets, and we'll start announcing all the details and all that in the next week or so. Um, and then uh, if you guys have any unpopular opinions or suggestions for guests in the show, you can email us at bottomofthebill at gmail.com. Any questions, whatever it might be, we'll, get to, we'll uh, try and get to them all on the show. Uh, yeah, so... Let's get let's get into it. Yeah, let's get into it. I'm digging the new look you got going yeah, on here, Steve. This is a new. Uh, I'm I'm trying to be presentable. <laughs> it's, a, it's very present. You look like a rock star. Yeah, it's like you got it. Like, I always used to think you have to dress for the job. Like if you're gonna go do construction, you better have like cargo pants and like boots and whatever and all this protective equipment. If you're gonna go work in Ruth's Chris, you gotta have what they're wearing. Yeah, you know? 100%. So I'm trying to be. A rock star. star. Yeah, I mean, so I'm going to dress is. for the job. That's what it is. Man. Every, I, what what collar would you say your shirt is? Ooh. Make sure you're talking to the mic. I think, I mean, it's definitely like a light olive. I don't know, chartreuse. Would you get to chartreuse? Not quite. I don't even know what chartreuse looks like. So I think it's, it's yeah. Yeah, I think the color's named after the drink. Adam Kenaway will have, I think he was trying to explain that to me. That I thought I thought the drink was named after the color, but the color is actually There's named after the drink. Oh. Yeah, it's brewed by monks. There's like a million flavors or something. Interesting. Um, if Adam catches it, I'm sure he'll put the little things in there. Sure, a little comment in there. Yeah. He'll probably make a comment about your, yeah. your outfit as well. Of course. <laughs> him, to... <laughs> yeah, there'll be a couple people making comments. Yeah, it's all right. Fuck them. Fuck well, you the look, haters. You look good. Fuck the haters. You. You look yeah, good. I like all the, the gold. It's part of it's all. I know. I, I yeah, get it. I was I was noticing your belt buckle and alligator Skin, it's pretty. It's got a. It's got a Skid vibe. Fox it's is Skid what Fox. I said earlier. It's got a vibe. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Definitely. Uh, vibe. Yeah. I mean, I think it's really important as a, as a musician or an artist to have a look. You know. What would you say your look is, Tony? Um, <laughs> the, Tony, I already got it. He is a uh, stagehand at a high school play. I, my look <laughs> is my straight look, black. Yeah, just black everywhere. My, my, he did get a watch though. He's a puppeteer, a nice and he watch. has no fear. No fear at all. I don't yeah, know if you guys yeah, saw my tattoo. I just want to let everybody know that, so I got it on my arm for everyone to see. Uh, not even sharks. Right? Not even sharks. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Yeah, uh, my not. looks just screams I'm building an empire. That's what my look screams. Yeah, under, uh, under the radar. <laughs> yeah, under the radar, fucking working in the shadows, pulling the strings. What would you say my look would be? Your look, you look like a farmer from the 1920s. I'll take that farmer. That probably spends about $10 on their entire <laughs> outfit. Yeah. That's what, exactly what I was going for. So, uh, thank you. 100%. Nailed it. Okay, if you had to guess where I'm from, what would you say? Oh, for sure, Kentucky. Yeah. yeah. Born and raised. Yeah. Nice enough. Wanna Wanna fight fight One day somebody's going to say yes to that answer. Bring to that it question. on. <laughs> Landed lawyer up. Oh, lawyer. my God. <laughs> Ridiculous. Um, all right. So, Steve, I want to get into some of the music stuff because you play two instruments. That I know you you probably play more than that. I do right? play more than that. I hey. play two instruments for money. Yeah. Right? <laughs> uh, do, which which instrument? What other instrument do you play? Piano, probably. Yeah. Well, I started with piano when I was about eight. Okay. Cool. And that was like a forced 
environment. It was like practice piano before school, go to take lessons after school, over and over and over, and it was kind of terrifying, right? Because we were learning all these uh, Russian classical pieces, yeah. and so all the titles to the songs were in Russian, so we didn't really know what it was, and our teacher was Russian, and she was intimidating and very, very good. Like, me and my brother took lessons at the same time, and we played duets, like, all the time. Oh, nice. And we were, like, fear-based training first, yeah. and uh, it kind of, it, it didn't really take hold. Like, we, me and my brother got pretty talented, but we didn't like doing it. So it didn't really work, and then and then later down the line we met uh, Eric Brigmond, who's oh, yeah. a phenomenal keyboard player. JJ Gray, yeah, with JJ Gray, Gray, who's playing in a couple weeks. I think they just opened up the amphitheater. Oh, um, they did? Yeah. Oh, so and, wait, Saint Augustine or the yeah, one Saint in the Jacksonville? Saint oh, Augustine. I didn't know that. Um, but so once we started taking lessons from him, everything changed. Like he started introducing us to the meters and like and other like really classic staples of funky groovy music. And my brother and I switched over from just piano to taking piano and guitar. And then from piano and guitar, we went from piano guitar to I started playing trumpet, and my brother started playing saxophone because we didn't both want to play the same thing because we were too close in age to do that. Yeah. So uh, so I started playing trumpet, guitar, and piano, and my brother played saxophone, guitar, and piano. And from that point, uh, you know, I got into symphonic band and started doing trumpet and symphonic band and. My, my freshman year, uh, there were 13 trumpets, and there were two upright bass players, and they were both seniors. And our, our band instructor, uh, Don Zentz, who was a phenomenal band instructor, um, and f- insane saxophone player, like mind-blowing, pretty much looked at me. He's like, Steve, you play guitar, right? I was like, yeah. He's like, well, now you play upright bass, because I got 13 trumpets, and I only need nine. I'm oh, like, wow. I'm like, all right, I'm, okay, I'm in. So... We went and got an upright bass. We got like a, a refabbed one. Um, it was, so it was like cheaper. It was like previously broken. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah and so it was like an uh, intro level thing. Man, those things are hard to travel with. Like upright basses yeah. take up so much space and they're just made of wood. So you yeah. can't throw it. We used to make fun of those kids all the time on it, school buses. It's a pain and in everything the butt. They're bringing it back home with them. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nerd. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty frustrating <laughs> instrument to travel with, but it's pretty gratifying just like. How much low end comes out of something like I that? I only it's always kind of played piano. Yeah. I, I tried Crazy. I tried electric guitar like every kid did and skateboarding, you know. But then I was just like, oh, I can't do this, so I just stuck with piano. But there's I never got the band experience. Like I never got yeah. to do high school band because there's no piano in that. Nah, I mean, if you did jazz band, maybe. I guess so, but, but not symphonic or any of that. Grew up in Kentucky, so, yeah. so oh, right. jazz, yeah. jazz is outlawed. Bluegrass, yeah, jazz is outlawed. Yeah, <laughs> bluegrass is jazz. What do they think about that? Um, you, you <laughs> would. I mean, kind of. Yeah, you can't. I can't say that, right? Especially in this changes. get up. You I can't, can't say you that. You can't go there. No, that's okay. I'd have to be chaperoned by you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd, you could definitely be chaperoned by yeah. Billy. If he vouches for you, I'd vouch for you. I won't even talk or anything. You could just drink bourbon or whatever mm, you'll do. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's usually the universal language is whiskey. Bourbon, yeah, whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I never got to do band. I always wanted to do band because it looked cool. And then I would just secretly make fun of all the kids. I'm like, eh, <laughs> but really, oh, I'm sorry. I would make fun of them to their face. And then I would secretly be like, I want to be in band. Yeah. Oh, my God. But I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to do it. Bill was a bully. Really? No. Does he, if you look at him, does he just scream bully? I was yeah. I was very much the opposite of that. <laughs> I was bullied a lot. Yeah. I was small. I was, I was a lot smaller. A lot. But I didn't always look like this, but like I I was pretty. Did you uh, go through an awkward stage when you. Oh were my younger? god, it was so bad. Yes. Yeah. I yeah, because I wanted to grow my hair out, but we weren't allowed, so I would just grow it as long <laughs> as they would let us. Which was Where'd like this go? weird. Fl- I went to bowls. Oh, you went to bowls? Yeah, I went I to Providence. Did. They wouldn't let us do that either. Yeah. This I'm, is too long. Yeah, my hair was my hair was long to the point where when the dean would walk by, I'd have to look down to make sure my hair wouldn't touch my collar. Yeah, they have oh. one of those in South Florida. You have a dean at your school. I went to public school. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, I did public school in middle school. It was much different. Yeah, it, public school is an absolute joke. Yeah, and you don't even show up half the time. You can still oh, no. pass. So yeah, that was basically what I did. Just didn't show well, up and you know wasn't involved in any extracurricular activities. And but anyways, you were in band, and then what would happen after that? Okay, so I, I started playing bass, right? I started getting good at bass. And can you uh, still play upright bass? I can for a couple songs, and then I'm um, well. My my upright bass has in uh, horrific action. You look so. like the perfect <laughs> height for somebody who should play upright. Bass. Yeah, that, they told me that too. <laughs> they did, and I have a look for upright bass apparently too. What's so, that? Uh, I don't know. Long dark hair. Okay, what? I never put that together. Me neither. 
But I would see like it's so big. Like I feel like if you saw me play upright bass, you would just laugh the whole time. Yeah. Not because it'd be bad. I probably would be bad. It'd be but terrible. But just, yeah. Just I don't know why, but you do look like a piano player. Maybe because I just I just always I just know you do. No, yeah. I I just get that. I just throw off that vibe. Piano it's vibes. A vibe. Yeah. It's a vibe. It's a piano vibes. vibes. Yeah. We get you a piano tie. If you're piano piano vibes. vibes. I've always wanted a keyboard neck tie. This is going way off the rails, but like I've <laughs> we'll get always you one. wanted one. But we'll no, make it happen. I mean like Christmas is coming up and no one has ever gotten me that i just don't understand it what is it a keyboard necktie from the 80s keyboard necktie. yeah God, it's like the piano roll necktie yeah, okay yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. i've always They're wanted classic. one of those <laughs> but so i feel funny. like i can't i can't buy it for myself you know what i mean we'll get we'll work it out yeah someone has to sneak you in was that from zoolander the mazagu or whatever he, that's how he got famous in the fashion industry because he came up with the keyboard oh necktie. my god <laughs> oh. somebody had to come up with it they're still making a mint a lot of people aren't wearing it nowadays so, oh, I saw on the uh, other day. anyways, so yeah, so I started playing bass. <laughs> <laughs> Billy's in a real ADD mood today, guys. It's okay. Right, yeah. It's been going all I day. I it over here with me, the ADD, <laughs> the ADD mood. So, um, so I started playing bass, and then I switched over to electric because th- I think that's a general tendency. Sometimes, like, you know, you play upright long enough and you see an electric bass, you're like, wait, this is much easier. Yeah. I'm going to do this. And I started doing that. And then all my friends who weren't in band, except for uh, maybe a couple of them were. They were like, let's start playing reggae and start doing like pop punk reggae or whatever, like the, the you know, sublime kind of thing. Sublime and, and uh, authority zero. Pantera. No. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, like Kali Buds type of stuff like oh, that. Oh, yeah, like okay. the, you know, the distortion guitar reggae stuff. Gotcha. And so we started, you know, we started playing around with that kind of music and we actually ended up booking a show. At Freebird. It was like a benefit concert. I was like 16 or 17 years old. That's cool. Playing at Freebird in two bands on two instruments, like usual. Nothing's changed. Nothing has changed. <laughs> yeah, so we had we had two groups. One of them, I can't remember the name of it, but the second one was called Juice Monkeys. And it was because <laughs> we always, and it's J-O-O-S-E. And it was because we always like drinking that juice. Remember, it was like, a, it's like Sparks. Or oh, like, yeah. It was like really, really bad for you probably, like yeah. full of sugar. So we always drank those at band practice, so we thought we'd just call ourselves Juice Monkeys. And that band was like Linkin Park and like other random stuff. Nice. And, now, and so I played bass in the reggae group at Freebird, and then I, I switched over and played guitar in the group after that. Um, and things are kind of the same. same. Yeah. <laughs> still, <laughs> still rocking it with like five different it. bands. and well, cause people, people generally need bass players, and it's hard to like need sometimes yeah with guitar players are, so, are just you have to fend for yourself dozen, yeah. you gotta do it yourself like you gotta start your own band yeah exactly exactly so that's kind of how i got to where i am i want to learn how to play bass bass is is good for you i'm pretty sure it's like spinach or like any like it's like it oh yeah helps you in general yeah it, it it's like if you know how to because it connects the rhythm to the melody basically so it's if you can if you can kind of put yourself in that mindset of being like that bridge between the two it makes playing every other instrument just that much easier yeah, you know. it's very true. I always imagine, like, when I think about it, like, imagine, like, the, the sonic frequencies, how they uh, manipulate each other. It's like drums is the beginning, right? Like, your drummer is, like, where it starts because it's atonal. It's really just percussive, and you just hear the pulse of whatever you're about to play. Right. And then the bass has to translate that energy from the drummer to everyone else. Right. And so everyone else can, like, be on top of both of them, and then they have to kind of create the platform for everyone right and right you know if the if your drummer is no good then the rest of it's going to be rough oh yeah but totally. if your drummer is good and your bass player is no good it's going to be hard getting past him yeah for sure if your drummer and your bass player are good the band's right. solid yeah. it doesn't matter what sure you can get away with else a lot. just be mediocre what is, that was something my dad used to I don't okay. want them to be mediocre, but yeah, you don't want them to. <laughs> you can but get away with it. My 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 uh my dad and his friends used to tell me when I was a kid it was like uh, uh if you have a if you have if you're a great if you have a great guitar player. Uh, and a shitty drummer and a shitty bass player, your band's gonna suck. If you have a great drummer and a great bass player and a shitty guitar player, the band's gonna be amazing. It's, it's like it's doable. Pretty much what it is. I mean, it's like you can you can you can hide behind shitty notes if you're a guitar player if your rhythm section is holding it I down. Know, yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. If the rhythm section's fine, you can kind of back up. Yeah. Just let them do something. Yeah. What, what do you hide behind? <laughs> you. Probably. Yeah. yeah. I can hide behind you, too. Yeah, flash, <laughs> it's easy uh, to do. Flash, it's yeah. easy to do. I mean, yeah, for sure. He's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's so I'll, loud. I'll take the hit box. right <laughs> on the chin. It's just like, where, where else do you go from there? Yeah. Uh, that's not exactly how I meant it. But no, yeah, that's sure. how I meant it, though. <laughs> I, I know, I know. 
Yeah, but I'll take a, a hit right on the chin. I'm like, all right, it's your turn, bud. Yeah. <laughs> Can't do worse than I did, so Ugh. get in there. Yeah, no, I definitely have my, my moments of, of being the worst one on stage for sure. But what's Sean it's always terrifying. say uh, from our band, Side Hustle, you should check him out, uh, was <laughs> he, he, he was like, man, my back just hurts. I'm like, why? And like, I've just been carrying this <laughs> all night. What a line! That That's the bass so player line. He says yeah. that shit There's all like time. all these bass player feeds that are like like Instagram like jokes, just bass player jokes, and like I think are only funny if you play bass. Like yeah. I'm pretty sure it works that way because we kind of get picked on a lot and we kind of feel like overly responsible for stuff. Yeah, definitely are yeah. because we never get the spotlight unless you're Otiel or, or Victor or or Marcus Miller or whatever. Yeah. So the bass player is always kind of doing a bunch of work. And they always feel like they're doing a bunch of work. Yeah. And they never get a guitar solo or a keyboard solo in the frequencies that everyone right. likes to hear. But most yeah, of the time, totally. it's just one note at a time, right? Or Yee. So you can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Unless you're Steve. Steve likes to go there just play That's fucking I'm just chords. Teasing. Yeah, I played, I played too many power chords on bass the other night with Ivan Poli, which was a fun, it was a, whole, it was a great gig. Yeah. Um, I was just filling. I was. I mean, I guess it's kind of filling in because where did you guys play? It was play a trio. At? I mean, we were just playing at like Island Girls, like just like a pay gig oh, kind okay. of type of thing. Like not. I have I have a bunch of bands that I showcase with. Yeah. Like Cow for Town Band. Yeah, for sure. And Spore and Greenhouse Lounge and, and you know, Trail Diver kind of does. It's in the ether right now. Like we'll play some shows here or there, and then I have a new project that's gonna be like. 80s hard rock like pretty aggressive what'd power you, rock what'd you call it i forgot we're calling it archangel Ar it's archangel, gonna be really yeah. really uh nostalgic i think for like anyone who's kind of missing that van halen -y yep. heart vibe like there's gonna be a lot of this power rock from late 70s early 80s vibe going on what, are you gonna be doing like covers the whole time or what? no it's all original oh really yeah okay. yeah it's all original so well, if um, i could suggest a cover it would be uh can you take me higher by those damn yankees <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, the rendition could be good. Yeah, that'd be great. It could be great. <laughs> no, the lyrics to that are just so nice. Like, can you take me higher to fly me over yesterday? Oh my God! I lyrics thought you wise. were talking about the uh, Creed song. Oh no! Yeah, that's what I thought you were talking about for a second. Oh my can God! Can you take me high enough? Mm -hmm. Ridiculous. Um, yes, but today. no. But those are all showcase bands. Yeah. So like, those only get to play on like Fridays and Saturdays, right? Because you need a venue, really. No, yeah. none of these. Like Calford Town is phenomenally loud because we're just like hardcore rock from the swamp. It's so swampy. Yeah. And we all have big amps, and we just re restaurants aren't exactly our friend. We've played Mellow Mushroom like twice, but it's very dialed back we'll play very quietly well also you guys do original music for the most part and at uh, bars all, if you're all playing part, all yeah. night we yeah. don't have any covers oh okay wow yeah, yeah. so at bars like, you gotta play you gotta play covers they don't want to hear original music <laughs> which is how i end up playing with ivan doing these kind of little trios and duos here and there yeah because we do covers all night and it's super easy yeah it should, yeah it's really great for the chops though to do the cover stuff how yeah, do you, if how you do actually you, learn them how do you juggle all that like yeah. on, a, on a calendar calendar? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. In I my mean, calendar? I missed that joke. I I uh, uh, was, I was making fun. I was roast, self roasting. Self roasting. Self -roasting. Yeah, because yeah. I'm bad at practicing. I said, you know, he's mm. like, it, it makes your chops better. I was like, yeah, if you actually practice that. Oh yeah. yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so um, it was me. Yeah. <laughs> roasting myself. But that's a problem that I'm running into because I'm just in two bands and then our cover band, the Hangout Express, and then so I guess technically three. And I'm just like, I got offered to do another gig. And, and you're full up. It's not even that a full up. I told the guy I was like, dude, if, if I join, join well, that was your, your band, uh, the parrot, the that was the Jimmy Buffett gig, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was just like, if I take this gig, like I'm, I'm be upfront with you, like I'm not gonna be able to to show up for every single one yeah. of them and everything. And he's like, well, and he didn't even tell me that's not what I'm looking for. I told him it was like, you asked for like a full time guy, I can't be that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's so the the way I balance it is. Most most of the two so two of the bands are semi out of town based right like Dave has to come from Atlanta so yeah. that's very prioritized schedule wise like he drove five hours to rehearse we have to do wherever he's there let's do it because like he put the effort in there Spore we play like a couple times a year yeah so it's not really that d demanding right Calford is regular that that shit hasn't changed in in like forever like we practice once a week if not twice a week every single week for like years. I'm pretty sure Calford rehearsed twice a week for an entire year straight before we even booked a show. And we, awesome. we had about 12, I think we're about 18 originals right now. We had like, before we were playing a show, we wanted to make sure we had at least an hour of originals. And they're all like five minutes. 
And Nat is just like very determined to make sure like no covers. Let's do another original. Let's write more music, write more music. And they just kind of, you know, they blossom like really well because we don't, we're not just, ca- Listen, I don't want to say cave in and play covers for time, but you know, that's why Calford doesn't play three hours at, you know, whatever yeah, restaurant. Well, I mean, also, if, you, if you're trying to do something we talk about a lot in the show is if you're trying to pursue original music, that's just not the way to do it either. You know, like if you want to if you want to be in an original band, you can't be playing bars around town. No, you have no. To just pick your shows like when you're first starting <laughs> yeah. out. I mean, when you're first starting out, kind of play with play whatever you can get, honestly. But like you get to a certain point where you know, you're picking your shows wisely, playing less and less locally and trying to get out on the road more and, and getting out there and that kind of thing. So, you know, yeah, it makes sense that you guys don't play the bars. That's not what you're trying to do. It's a dead end, you know. It is a dead end. I mean, but the thing is, there's money there, right? I yeah. guess that's the trade off. At first, there is, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, but so, right. So I have all these bands that are pretty much, you know, they're either, they play sparsely, like Spore plays a couple times a year. Greenhouse only plays, well, for now, Greenhouse only plays a couple times a year because, well, the whole pandemic kind of threw everything. Through. Yeah, totally. Through. So, you know playing with Ivan here and there is kind of like my weekday, how I, how I fill out my weekdays, but it really doesn't get overcrowded because none of the bands or all of the bands are not full time. That's yeah, kind of th- how I, I think get that, that, that was my problem. Then is somebody was trying to hire me full time. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, but I guess well, it's a good problem. Well, to they're have. kind of, full you're too time. busy to take on this oh, stuff because you're working so hard. It just, it just, you know, well, there's trying. at least I am. Anyways. Yeah, you're working hard. There's no, he uh, is too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's got like five different bands. Like, good lord, there, it's there, a lot. Yeah, there's like at a certain point, it's like there's, but we hear about all these guys that are like playing in like five different bands or like th- even like three different bands. It's like, for instance, like like Krasno, will will like he has Soul Live. Then for a while, he was also doing Lettuce, and then he was doing like you know like getting pickup gigs here and there. The, those guys have like schedules. You know, it's like yeah. well, Lettuce is gonna be on tour. For you know, four months, and then I have right. the rest of this time off. So now, Soul Live's gonna do a tour. Right, that's and how I will. The, yeah, eventually. Exactly, and that, that that that's that's how you're able to do it. You know, when you're talking about a guy like Jimmy Parrish, who's who's like a full time bar musician, doing other shit too, but he's also playing full time in town. Uh, that's why those things don't work. Are we talking about like playing in bar bands around town that are playing three or four nights a week? Uh, and then trying to be in a creative project or being in another bar band, it's really hard to make that work because your schedule's already packed for the year with yeah, that one you, band. It's like you accidentally did it to yourself. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so. I almost cluster fucked my own life, didn't I? Well, with the Jimmy Buffett thing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't have seen any of us. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that would have been difficult. Well, <laughs> thanks for talking me through that, boys. I thought it would be a good topic to bring yeah. up or anything like that. Just just scheduling in general. Yeah, totally. What, what happens when you're popular and everybody likes you? <laughs> I don't know. How like I don't know how to do it. Multiple Please calendars. Uh, he seems to be doing a great job with it. Lots of calendars. I got a no calendar on my way out the door. Uh, calendar, on a paper calendar, like dry board calendar. I've got a, I've got a kitten calendar. calendar yeah, you yeah. got to do it. Yeah, the kitten calendar is good as long as you look <laughs> at it every day. That's what I really the, like. The crucial <laughs> one that keeps me from double booking. I swear, this is like the way I prevent myself from double booking stuff. Which hopefully, now that I'm saying this, I don't accidentally double book myself. But is my calendar is literally on the way out the door. I open up my front door, and the, the calendar, dry board calendar, is right there next to me yeah. every day. I walk out there. If someone asks me, "Hey, can you play this?" I'll remember because I just saw it. Yeah. You still, I, but you still use an analog thing. That's what we use. I love analog. Well, okay, but like Google Calendar is way I have better. Google Calendar when 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 I use I use the I start analog and then move to digital. Interesting. I I stay I I have I just use Google Calendar because I live on my phone basically. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I'm just constantly checking my emails and constantly checking the calendar. Yeah. And like constantly on social media, trying to keep you know present on that. So it's like well, I'm see terrible his phone at social too. Media. It looks like he got it at a flea market in Pakistan. Uh, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> it's so, just. It's well, a, look, mine's, it's look, so look, bad. mine's ancient. Oh yeah, what is that? The iPhone six? Oh uh, no, no. Before that, this is a this is a five five brains and a four body. Wow. Yeah. Jesus. It yeah, still well, works, by the way. Yeah, they, oh. they still work for the most part. Yeah. This one's still. This is an S seven, the Galaxy S seven. It's just it's slow as hell. iPhone sucks. But, you know, 
Don't it's you fun. hate that when you're like in a group message with people and there's just one dickhead that has an the Android green. phone and he's like, you fucked it up for all of us. We're all green now. We're all yeah. green now. That's him. That's that was me. you? That's the reason the yeah. Monster Mash chat's green? Yep. Yeah. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. No. I haven't checked that chat in forever. I'm sorry. Oh, my goodness. You don't worry about it. You'll be all yeah, right. Yeah, this will, this will air Anyways. after the festival. <laughs> <laughs> so did yeah, well, that's right. Yeah, well, so get away uh, with it. Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> so I did want to ask you: Was there like a defining moment when you were younger where you were like, "I want to play music. That's what I want to do. Like, I want to be in a band and pursue music." Yeah, there kind of was, and it was like, so <clears throat> when I was fifteen, I was at uh, I think it was the opening opening game for the Gators, like some super rowdy drunken party or whatever and my dad's friend picks me up uh by my legs like from here and he's going to like pick me up for a fireman's carry because you know people have been partying and we won and he was just doing ludicrous stuff and uh he ended up tripping over a crack in the driveway and we both fell and i fell from about so my knees were at his shoulder height and he tripped right so and i was about this tall then how old were you 15 oh okay so I hit my head um, on the driveway from about 10 feet up in the air. We thought it was a concussion, uh, but we went to the doctor and got a bunch of MRIs and a bunch of CT scans. Like, oh, my God. Like, I just had so many CT scans. And there was a blood clot, like, <laughs> this big between my brain and my skull. Oh, my God. Um, like, right here. So uh, I, I couldn't go anywhere. My mom said I was going to have to wear a helmet if I left the house. Um, because if someone had hit me in the head, like with a locker, like at school, like if I, had, I if I had a bottom locker and I stood up and hit my head on a top locker, or like someone hit me with a book or like something silly, it could have dispersed the blood clot and I'd be dead. Dead. Jesus. So, what I did was I had a what amp did I have back then? I think I had a my brother had bought like a Fender Deville tweed, and uh, and I had my my good friend Ryan Huddleston, who's sadly not with us anymore had his teal Stratocaster. Yeah. And then I had some of my friend Michael Michael Glock's uh I had a rat. And then I had a bad monkey, which was a Digitech overdrive pedal. Okay, yeah, I remember those. And yeah. then uh and uh I think a digital delay. And those okay. were like I had three pedals, a Stratocaster and that DeVille. And I pretty much sat upstairs and played guitar like ten hours a day, every single day, until I like was allowed to go back to school. And that's kinda all I wanted to do. Like, no one was making me do it. My parents would try to get me to come down. They, like, turn the amp down. I'm like, I'm sorry. This is, feels better this way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to crank it. Yeah. And uh, and it was keeping me safe, right, because I didn't have to leave the house. But also, it, it, it grew this, like, I, I got that feeling where, like, I had a, I think I did have a loop pedal at the time, so I could, like, loop something. And when I started taking improvised solos on top of chord progressions and no one telling me to stop and being able to do that for 20 minutes – that feeling, I think I got really hooked on that. And I just was like, I must have this for the rest of my life. Like, I got to play music. Like, this feeling is way too good. I'm supposed to be doing this. I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to be doing this. Yeah. Um, and then when I started playing shows and people received it well, I was like, oh, I am supposed to be. I'm good. This is good. People like it. I'm like, people don't hate my guts. Right, right. Like, I mean, not that I'm aware of. But, yeah. it, <laughs> but it's like, uh, it was definitely that moment, I think, when I learned that you know, improvisation and, and knowing, knowing how to, you know, express yourself on top of a platform more so than, more so than just playing by myself, like just playing chords on guitar is fun. You know, like I enjoy playing, I enjoy comping and, and backing people up. Like I don't, I don't mind it, but I think what really hooked me was solo and improvisation. Yeah. From that point I was like, Oh my God, I just want to fly. Like, delay and and a rat (laughs) like it's on oh yeah for sure man. like that's a a classic tone yeah totally um i didn't realize how addicted i get to pedals until later yeah the pedal addiction different much later man that's a whole different part of it but yeah i think i would say i was about 14 or 15 when i first first realized that that's what i wanted to do for the rest of my life like no brainer i was like i gotta i gotta play rock and roll or music of some sort like i love r&b and funk like, like the, the, the genres people don't get to see me play often, the ones that I play at my house because I don't have any bands that do it, are kind of some of my favorite ones, which is kind of funny. Like, like funk and R&B. Like, like, well, think. yeah. Like, like, I really enjoy playing, like, these R&B vocal lines. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, with my synths, like this. Like, really, really slow. 
but like expressive notes. Yeah. And they don't get to happen that often because most of my bands are just like, floor it! Yeah, ah, for sure. Scream, Steve! Yeah, for like, sure. All right, all right. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's got a soft side. Yeah. A, but late, a late night soft side. Late night, hey, it could be. It's <laughs> a good band name. Late night soft side? I'll write yeah. it down. It's a good <laughs> album name, too. Good album name, yeah. yeah. It's a good album name. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I've, I've started this giant. Yeah, yeah, you should have like a thing, right? They keep track of good names of things. Well, uh, yeah. like I, I've been coming up with band names forever and ever, and uh, I just never wrote them down. And I just started writing them down a week ago. And you got a bunch, huh? I've got like over 50. It's really? Insane. Let's hear. Oh, you got some? Well, uh, Don't well, give them away, though, right? right? What, what did I just. Uh, late night soft side. Late, late, late night soft Late Night Southside is great band name. Late Night Southside definitely. Uh, what the, uh, some new ones that I had? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Ox and Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great one. <laughs> what kind of genre? What genre of music would you would say Ox and like, Jennifer would like, play? Like bedroom '90s rock for sure. I would say. <laughs> See that? Like stained or something. Yep. Uh, bedroom. That's bedroom. How that totally makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Bedroom rock. What? That's a thing. Yeah. No, I totally. Un- I, I can hear it. I already. still forgot. Late nights. Sleep side? What did I say? Soft, soft side. Soft side. Soft sorry, side. Sorry, sorry. Late night soft side. But anyways, that's yeah. definitely. I would. I would definitely like B sides of an album. One. One I came up with when we were at the studio that Billy re- refuses to put on his list. Oh no, is, I put it down. Oh, you put it down. Yeah, Which one? we don't have to say it. Um, synth jizz. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can't stand it. We don't have like to. as it's coming out of his mouth, he's like, no, no, wait, don't say it, don't say it. Oh. I forgot what happened. We were saying something in the studio, and like I was, I was recording a guitar part or something. It's just a bunch of synth jizz on everything. Yeah, and I was like, and, <laughs> I, and like Billy was like, this is like a dumb idea or something. And I was just like, you only care if it's like a bunch of fucking synth jizz going everywhere. That's, it was like something along those lines. I can, I mean, but synth, you can get carried away. Synth is fun to get carried away with. Yeah, just kind of yeah, jizz yeah, on everything. Yeah. I, I love synth. Good synth uh, solos are some of my favorites for sure. No, they're not. Yes, they are. Eli, <laughs> Eli Winterman, Winterman is one of my favorite Whoa. players of all time. Who? Eli Winterman. Oh, from yeah. yeah. One of my he's favorite got, musicians got, of all time. He's got a good sine wave. That's what you're talking about last time. Yeah. He's also, really uh, Herbie he Hancock. <laughs> so you know, he's, a hell of he a sine wave. he's got a hell of a sine wave. Yeah. He really does. Though. <laughs> um, that Moe Prodigy. That's what's in that. Is it Moe Prodigy? That suitcase over there. I haven't touched it. In I a like while. the color of that suitcase. Yeah, it actually is the exact same size, and it cost me a dollar. Oh, good call. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what? Uh, I guess well, probably one of the first creative projects you were in was a, was like the reggae band that you were talking about earlier. I, I wouldn't say that was it was it was those were covers oh covers okay yeah so I guess the first original pro- oh my goodness okay so the first original project I was ever in was uh my first so spore is an acronym right yeah um, yeah I've always wondered what that meant spontaneous so, production of recurring energy pretty close spontaneous progression progression yeah sorry. of recurring energy and and <laughs> I, um so because we always just advertised it as an acronym. Our fans would always fill in the acronym with all sorts of crazy nonsense, cool. like things I probably shouldn't say on this show because they're just it's no, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, like so. Some of them, Alex, Alex did a little time in uh, uh, somewhere in the Panhandle, yeah, and uh, I think he was there for a little, like a couple weeks or like a month or two, and he got the inmates to make four acronyms too. No, so shit. he's got all these like crazy like messed up like inmate oh, okay. yeah. that I really but also you know we have really nice ones like two bob crew we played with two bob crew yeah. and the one they came up with was uh sun people of Ra enlightened that's kind of cool which is very two bobby in my opinion because yeah. it's like sun people of Ra. it's african it's yeah, yeah definitely but then we there's like uh, there's there's some really bad ones but there's really good ones but either way that it, I, I distract myself it's it's the first band i was ever creative with was me um, and three of my friends uh, from high school, uh, Paul Sout and Chris Connolly being two of them. And uh, they don't, I don't, I know Paul just moved to Nashville and he's like playing music and Chris is working at a brewery. So they kind of like do their own thing, but it was called everything but anchovies. Was everything the, but anchovies. was the name, was the name of our That's band. A good band yeah. And uh, we shortened it to uh, an acronym EBA. So like, then we started coming up with a bunch of other random like things, but it was, it had this very um, white stripesy, Sound. And what did you play in that one? Guitar. Guitar, okay. Yeah, I played guitar. It was guitar, bass, drums, vocal. Um, and it had some angst to it. And I had all, the, all the lyrics are written down. Paul wrote all the lyrics in like a little composition book. And they're all scratchy. And they're all like angry love songs and stuff. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. And uh, I, think, I think we played like one or two little things here and there. And then we all went our separate ways when college happened. Um, and then when college happened, I, I ended up meeting... That's how I ended up my, meeting the Spore guys at this. That's a crazy story. So uh, we go to North Carolina to go to some crazy show during Halloween, which it's 
around it. Around that time. Yeah. yeah. So get to get to Asheville. I've never been to Asheville, which is a really cool music town and also I love that really place. heady lots of hippies. Used to, used to go to Bible camp there. I didn't go to Bible camp there. I wonder why. I went to something else. Yeah, uh, a little bit different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> different kind of camp. Yeah. So uh Just so yeah, so you know, d- dipping your toe in the psychedelic pool and watching music and seeing like seeing how it reacts with each other and and I started networking quickly, right? Like you start meeting so many people when you're in that state of mind. Yeah, totally. It's like, oh my God, you like this kind of thing too? Wow, this is crazy. And so I met uh, Joe Fuller and uh, Alex Sears and they they were staying in the hotel room. There were like 11 of us in this like, I'm telling you, this motel was like, make would make some RV from Breaking Bad look clean. Oh my God. Like there were like explosion marks in the cinder block. Um, what is that the hotel that's uh, outside the orange peel? It's like it's just called Motel or something. It's like re- it's red. Is it for people? White. Uh, it's not like a hostel sort of thing. It's pretty much d- completely dilapidated. Okay, but never the, mind. But you do pay people. Okay, all right. All um, right. it was super cheap. We got like twelve hippies into this room. <laughs> um, gross. And gross. yeah, yeah. In retrospect, yeah. Here's the deal. But also I, back then, nah, yeah, it didn't course, matter. You do whatever. Hippie, back then. Hippies shouldn't be allowed inside. Okay. <laughs> well, it depends. You know, there's, there's. I think there's a uh, spectrum of hippie. Like, like, I'm not endorse any of Billy Begley's opinions. They're, by the way. they're outdoor cats, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I try to dress like an indoor cat. Yeah, so, in, you know, in, yeah indoor cats all day. Indoor yeah. cats you're, all day. You're an indoor outdoor guy. I'm cat. an indoor out. I am an yeah. indoor outdoor guy. <laughs> External <laughs> use only. Hey, uh, uh, but, uh, but so that's where I met Alex yeah. from Spore. Sorry. Yeah. I know you were about a tangent us. No, you? I know I do that a lot. Uh, so I met Alex. I met Alex and Joe. So Joe was messing around on some software, which turned out to be Ableton. And I was yeah. like, "What is that? And how are you doing? Like, what?" I was just like pointing, like, "What is this?" And he's like, "Oh, come here, I'll show you." And he just like starts getting me into Ableton and like showing me all the workarounds through Ableton. And then Alex is. He had a ton of dreads back then. Alex's dready head pops up, and he's like, "Oh, are you guys doing Ableton?" Blah blah blah. And then next thing we know, like. We're all hanging out, talking about this. We go back to Jacksonville, back to Joe Fuller's house, and there's Joe Knoble at Joe Fuller's house. So no shit. Joe Knoble, Joe Fuller, Alex, and I proceeded to pretty much live there for like a month or two. Like from that, like we got home from the trip, and I just like stayed you stayed, there. you just never left. <laughs> yeah, because I was in college, and I was like a dropout ish. Yeah, like I, I dropped out. Of you were at college age. Yeah, I was college age. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, like, that was like the beginnings of Spore. So Alex and Joe and I would just create so much psychedelic mayhem. Like we were like, I would play keys and I'd play guitar, and Joe would play keys and Joe would play guitar, and we'd all play like electronic drums and like random all the random equipment Joe Fuller had accumulated. Me, Joe, and Alex would just utilize in this crazy sort of psychedelic. I mean, there were this is not enough. Yeah. And so uh, we had this idea and it needed a drummer and we didn't have a drummer and then griff i think and some other people were putting together this thing at blues rock i don't know if you remember blues rock cafe. oh i, I do here at that no, time. Remember blues rock cafe? that's right oh, yeah. he's lucky of yeah course. of course um so blues rock cafe was happening do you know what the st chasers now oh yeah yes. that's, that's what i've heard yes. okay yeah um and we met chris richard at, at, at a blues rock jam um, I wonder why he was there and it just like it was perfect alex alex was like he's just playing every drum beat that i want to hear i'm like all right this is our drummer now, and from that point, Chris Chris had already been medium to decently like he was pretty successful as far as that age as a musician. Yeah, like he had seen a lot more than me and Alex and Joe had seen because we were just living under a rock. <laughs> yeah, uh, making our psychedelic nonsense, and so Chris kind of brought everything up to like to light and started booking shows. And Chris knew Tim Hall. And that's how we started. Tim hooked us up with some amazing shows. Yeah, like, he really gave us a chance. He's like, "Hey, you guys want to sell some tickets? I'm going to put you on this sweet, sweet sold out thing." Like, blah blah blah. And and Tim kind of gave us our foot in the door. And then Spore, for a band that has no lyrics and very little organization as far as people go, like we really somehow wormed our way through a lot of pretty cool stuff. Yeah. And. Um, I don't even remember how we got to this point. Just like one of your first creative project, really. Like I guess I would say that was that. my first real creative, effective project. Okay. Like the the high school everything, but anchovies. Like we played like one or two shows. It never actually blossomed and everything. Spore was I would say the first thing that I like wrote and felt proud of and in charge of, and then like gave out and was like, all right, let's see how this works. Isn't it kind of crazy how like you guys? So you guys all met 
in Asheville. You didn't meet in Jacksonville, but you all lived in Jacksonville. Right. That's the kind of crazy, crazy right? shit that happens at festivals where it's like you meet these people that you find out that you live like next door to kind of. Pretty much. And it's like then you can – and like sometimes you – like we met somebody at, at Wani one year who was like a lawyer that negotiated contracts for like NASCAR. And then like when Whoa. we when we signed up with our management company, I had him look. He's like, he's like I've always wanted to get involved in the music, uh, you know, the entertainment side of uh, – of of you know the of the, the legal stuff, so I'll tailor your contract for free, and I'll uh, and I'll make sure it looks good. So he was just like, did you just saved a couple hundred bucks? Yeah, easily. Easy. So just like, just like shit like take that. so much money. Yeah, and then like another friend that I met from Wani was just like he lived in Fernandina and was just like, yeah, uh, I I I own like a bunch of businesses or whatever. We do like private parties and like hired side hustles to come and play one of his shows. It was like well, actually when you first joined the band, it was over that that the horse pro- farm? Yeah, we played with Heather Gillis and like, you know, that whole that whole thing. Yeah, I was taking selfies for tender with horses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good look. Got a lot of horses. Oh, uh, but yeah, are you from Kentucky? Born and raised, want to fight about it. So it's just like it's just no, like no. <laughs> it's crazy right. how Good decision. <laughs> it's crazy how that kind of happens at festivals where you just meet people like that randomly. And then yeah. the, you, these these uh, connections form. And it's really crazy. Yeah. I little did I know that that connection would last as long as I mean it still does last. Like Spore's gonna play a show here in, at some point. Oh really? You guys have something yeah, on the books? I think we're gonna announce. Are you allowed to to say it? Yet? I'm pretty sure I I could, but I'll just let it happen. Yeah, just let it happen. I'll just let it happen. Um, but we're all very excited. Yeah, and, I can and imagine. Now Spore now Spore also includes. Spore is like this weird secret powerhouse, like random thing. Like we don't really play that often, if ever. But when we started, it was just Chris, me, Alex, and Joe, three, four crazy hippies, pretty much doing ridiculous hippie stuff, playing crazy psychedelic music. I feel like part of Spore was really we just wanted to play music for festivals to play the festivals, so we could just be at the festivals. That was my goal with like it yeah. just like I don't want to pay for a festival again. I have to be at this festival. Right. I want to be at all the festivals. So how do I make a band that caters to that? But also, I really enjoy playing this type of music. Yeah. So let's just do that. It yeah. wasn't uh, a very long lasting business model. No, 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 no. It's not self sustaining sometimes. But it was. Uh, it's I'm fun. Just, I'm just saying, like that. That was mine. Just like I went to a festival for the first time, and I was like, oh my god, I have to. We have gotta, to make a festival we, we band. gotta get it back in. Yeah, we yeah. gotta get back in somehow. That's the yeah. kind of stuff you can do when you're younger, though. Like, yeah, that, you know, it's like because you have your friends that that come and support you at a younger age. It's like no one's got any real responsibilities, so you can go out yeah, there just and go festival and party and play music, and you get these great shows because you your friends and your family come out and buy the tickets, and it's like, and then you get these amazing spots, and then you know, it's like, so the, the the vision doesn't have to be what it is like when you're older. You know, yeah, there's much to, more process. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you're older, and then you can take all process. their money. Yeah. <laughs> well, you want them. You want them to give you them. You want yeah. to yeah, take it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's how we do it. We yes, want you uh, to give it to us. Yeah. No, yeah. they don't. So, do you have any like crazy? I'm, I, I, I mean, I know, oh but just God. for the people out there, do you guys have any like any memorable moment where you were like, "This is this is fucking crazy." Yes, so many. Whether it was a show or like a, like an after party experience or whatever. Oh it might have God, been. yes. And they're the not. Dirt, ex- Steve. Oh, they're not great for camera. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's really what the show's not. all about. Oh my God. Um. Oh, I wonder if I should do this one. You can leave out names if you want. Oh, I don't remember her name. <laughs> <laughs> so, so <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> She's about to get me too on right now. No, 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 no. It's not because it has nothing to do with me. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> so we go. Oh, I don't even know if I should do this one. So we go play this show. This is just the type of people we are, right? We're like kind of messed up in the head, like funny. Like yeah. it's funny to us, bad things. Yeah. Sometimes. So, but there's other. There's like a bunch of like spore. It was actually pretty dramatic. The more I think about it, like we we stirred things up here and there. Like, like like amongst each other or amongst each other with random people and fans and other band members from other places and band members sisters and random nonsense. That's yeah. that's a common trait amongst a lot of bands. Yeah, we were like we had like these little rock and roll moments of like this is messed up. Yeah. Cool. Oh, cool. not cool. Yeah. Not cool. Back it up. Yeah. Um, but there's like like Spore has gotten to do amazing things because I think we just all have this crazy little energy like that just like all mixed together like we got to play we got to play Halloween by far one of the coolest experiences as a band um, was playing Halloween during Les Claypool on I think it was Friday or Saturday night like we played like 11 p.m. at Halloween 
we're spore. Wow. It's just spore. Like, we're just spore. Same exact time. Like, you had to pick. Do you want to go see Les Claypool and Primus? Or no, it was Lennon uh, Claypool oh, Delirium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or Spore. And and so the funny thing is, like, I don't know if you've been to a String Cheese Festival. Yeah. Uh, string, whole cheese, week, yeah. string Cheese is a very light, like, accepting vibe. It's, like, very easy to listen to. Yeah. Primus? It's you a little, seen Primus? Yeah, it's a little, it's intense. little intense. Yeah. However, all of our fans really enjoy Primus. So they all went to Primus. None of our <laughs> fans were at our show. Yeah. And all the String Cheese fans that couldn't handle Primus was like, oh, God. Came to, came see to you our guys. show. Nice. Right. So we had all these new fans because Primus was too much. But secretly, we were going to like smash them into the ground. Yeah, too. right. Yeah. But Alex you, Alex wanted to play the Exorcist theme for oh all of Oh, my God. Right. There's just the do 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 Yeah, yeah. Doo-doo. But you guys, but Spore is definitely not like Primus, though. You guys no, were no. definitely like, like a heavier jam tronic kind of band but 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 very i mean i've seen i only saw by the time i got to jacksonville you guys were already kind of like not doing like like you were all kind of pursuing other things by that point but um i saw you guys at obj like two years ago i think and i remember watching that, i was like holy shit spores like that was the first time and the only time i've ever we're seen crazy. you guys so you guys were great it was it was a heavier jam tronic kind of thing yes but, it's but, heavy but still much more palatable than like primus you know what i mean well yeah we had we played major keys yeah exactly <laughs> and, like, and and just like i've had i've had joe's song stuck in my head for 10 years which one you already know yeah. oh my god demoto yeah demoto <laughs> it gets stuck in my head too now yeah Ten so years. Ten years. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell him that. Actually, okay. You told him that. Yeah, I think so. I uh, uh, so when when you first joined the band, you yeah. told me that there's a, a weird thing with the fans. It made this weird oh, like yeah. beef between it Lucky was, Costello and Spore. Oh the yeah, because it would be like it was it was like Ash and Gary or yeah, like or whatever like you want to arch rival. Yeah, it's funny because none of us actually hated each other. No. It was just, all the fans like they they were like, oh Lucky's way better. They're like Spore's better. We're like, dude, well, why this is it's just like, good press for us? I guess, but I thought that was hilarious. It is. Fun. The more I think about it, and like. I don't think that kind of rival. That's, I think we took it for granted that we created a rival. Yeah, it was very, very fun. Um, yeah, but it was that mostly. So much. It was never like I got it from you or any of the. No, rest of the we band enjoyed mates. each other exactly. And I, even I sat in, and uh, when uh, Alice was uh, uh, unavailable, um, right. yeah. uh, he, uh, uh, I had sat in and, and played. I think like two shows with you guys, and so the the fans would uh, be the ones like, you guys need to do what Spore's doing, or or I don't know what they were saying to y'all, but I was just like. Okay, if you th- think this rivalry is happening, I know I talked to Alex a lot about it and Chris too, and he's just like, "Yeah, it's fucking hilarious." Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what the deal was, and we, I think it's because we both played similar size and similar like everything we did was just yeah. similar, so, similar just setup weird. as far as the members of what you had on stage probably, and also uh, yeah. the fact that you're both instrumental jam bands. But I would yeah, go, I'm I would go as yeah. far away. I remember one time I went, I went and played a show in Orlando, and I had a fan come up to me who was at my show, and it was like. He's like, you're lucky, right? I'm like, yeah. I was like, I just want to let you know sports better. Oh, boo. See? <laughs> I was like, oh, thank that's you. Not, that doesn't make me feel better. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. But that's what I would get all the time from like fans. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. But not there's. I never felt like there was any animosity between those us. Rival- no. See, those rivalries are typically not between the bands. No, I know. the fans. It's have really to, weird. They have to pick a it's side. Like, you it's, know? Like, it's like you think the guys in Fish and the guys in the Grateful Dead really don't like each other? Oh, no. yeah, exactly. No. It's like. But well, Fish fans are good. I mean, Trey played the, yeah, the Fare Thee Well thing, didn't he? Yeah, exactly. So it's like, yeah. So Right. So it's never between the bands it's, it's always like between the fans but it's interesting how how that creates like awareness you know what i mean it's like right. it's, it's, it's like funny. that kind of rivalry even though you guys might not feel it, the fans create this kind of awareness of the bands that wouldn't have been there otherwise i suppose so it's really good for business look at look at, look at the west really coast, east coast thing yeah. target of walmart west coast east coast 90s rap battles you we know? could if we had just delved into it more maybe I mean, both of them would have been more successful they're dead now yeah I mean, <laughs> these guys didn't do it the right way these guys were serious Damn, I'm just saying. you imagine a situation where it would be like we fucking had gunfights and shit <laughs> oh my god <laughs> That'd be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be a that'd be like a drastic change. For we the would jam be band shooting movie. over the heads of people the whole time. <laughs> Never at you. I know. Oh my god. There's that great documentary on HBO about uh, I think it's Dr. Dre and, and like Oh and yeah. And Steve uh, um I I Yeah, I I have I have Yep. Yeah, um, yeah that was what's his first name. Not, I don't know, like John, John, Johnny, I don't or remember. Jimmy, Jimmy, maybe. Yeah, Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy Iovine. Either way, there's like a huge segment about like how much violence there was in the rap in the community, the rap community, and like, yeah, it was just like 
was mind blowing. Well, and you have to like remove yourself. And interesting how a guy like Jimmy Iovine was like coming on there from producing like Fleetwood Mac and Bruce Springsteen, oh my God, that- and then entering like the hip hop world in the early '90s, where it was like he just needed edgy stuff. Yeah, and, and just, he had Nine Inch Nails, and he had Marilyn Manson. Like, yeah, it was crazy with inter- Interscope. And it's just it's so it's so crazy, and then he comes into this world, and he's just like. Uh, what is happening here? Why are people literally? It's like the, there's always been like an underworld involved in music, like through the mafia and the drug cartels. All the money, people and need the money, money exactly. from somewhere. But but it got and and there's always been a little bit of violence that came with it. But in the early '90s in the hip hop community, it was it was like aggressive. It was like it was over the top violent. Where it was like they were notorious for having shootouts and people yeah. were dying. And it was like it was very. It was, uh, bad. It was publicized. It was heavily publicized. Well, Maybe yeah, that's what the difference was. You know. Yeah. Well, the media was different, right? Yeah. For you sure. don't have Facebook. Yeah. You, you had the news for sure. And and I think that community was also a lot less tied in with you know they were coming from much more of like the the. Um, the underground world, I would say, rather than being so tied in with the, like the higher ups, like the mainstream in, uh, music industry at that time, with like Bruce Springsteen and Fleetwood, like these are like people that are seriously tied into like every th- every aspect of of, Bruce of a culture. And Fleetwood Mac didn't like each other. J- no, I'm just saying like no, just, Tom Petty and Fle- no. <laughs> oh yeah, Tom no, Petty yeah, and no, uh, and oh God, Stevie Nicks. Yeah. yeah, so Stevie Nicks and Tom Petty were supposed to work on this track together, and Jimmy. So it's like the dynamic is you have Tom Petty. Yeah. Stevie Nicks and then your producer and the producer like hijacked Stevie Nicks from Tom Petty and Tom Petty like well it was yeah so what had happened was is that know, maybe he's gotten better no no the, the, it's it was a similar thing the, that kind of stuff was happening uh where, but it was more like the producer was being taken and, well romantic yeah but and they then, were like romantically involved it, it was Stevie that and, and then also like Tom Petty they did a song with oh, uh right. with, with Fleetwood Mac and they released or, or with Steve Tom Petty did a song with Stevie Nicks they released the song right before I think Tom Petty's album came out and Tom Tom Petty's album like flopped because of it because oh. it was like this it was it was being it was like, okay well we want to hear you with Stevie Nicks we don't want to hear your own album you know oh, so and then marketing. and so. then uh, Stevie Nicks was like oh well, we want to. Uh, I'd like you to write a song for me. And Tom Petty was like, "Well, if I'm gonna write a song, I'm gonna write it for myself. Fuck you, <laughs> type shit. Yeah. You know, it's hard to write a song. I'm not gonna just give it to you. You know, not a Tom Petty song though. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> uh, that's not, that's not hard to write. Tom Petty, I would say, is like, a, is the a, best song. <laughs> yeah, it's like. It's like, the, and like also as a lyricist, the way he paid attention to how words work together. It's like you have to really, but you know you don't. He's not from to, here. He, he, yeah, he's he's like the Ernest Hemingway of writing songs. He doesn't listen to music for <laughs> lyrics. Number one, which is a good compliment. Uh, and if but they are if, sample. If it, if it doesn't have like like just synth jizz all over the place, then he's not into it. It's just it's got to have synthesizers. No, I'm just saying, just Tom Petty. He's a big like, Millie Vanilli guy. Millie Vanilli. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Uh, yeah, this yeah, guy is so far away from like <laughs> pop culture, like it's so it's so gone. That's pretty good. Um, we were we were uh, having a conversation about uh, one of our songs. The last song on our album that's coming out soon is gonna be like kind of a, like a ballad sort of song. And he's like, I don't know why we're putting this last. Like we should for put this hustle. up. We should we should put this yeah. up front and oh, for side hustle. Sorry. And uh, I'm like, name. Yeah, he's like, there's there's pot there's ballads all on the radio all the time. I'm just like, name one. And he couldn't name one. No, I, Ballads I, on the radio? Yeah. Well, like Simple Man? Like Simple Man? Like or like the, Tennessee Whiskey? Or yeah. like like Billy was just saying there's no there's no hit ballads. I mean, it's not true at no, all. No, but he was saying it's totally hit ballads. But, and but, I, and but also that, all hit ballads. And I, and I, yeah, and I but also that didn't say... that had just come out or like that are like popular is what I'm trying to and say. And I also didn't say uh, they like should brand be... brand new stuff. Yes, thank you. And I also didn't say they should be the first song on the album. I said we should put it in the middle. You should move it up. A nice three or four. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Well, whatever. That was the whole point. I feel like there was like... Because you're making fun of me because of how my opinion about Tom Petty and I was like... You, and then, and then your 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 backhanded response was, "Oh, like Millie Vanilli? <laughs> what year do you think it is, dude?" <laughs> I'm just saying that's <laughs> Millie Vanilli reference. I'm just saying that's the Millie kind of shit Vanilli? Billy likes. Just really cheesy synthesizers and just like terrible music. That's okay. what, that's what I was trying to say. Whatever, man. Sorry, oh, man. It didn't hit. I'm just, I just you know gotta throw it out there sometimes. <laughs> so <laughs> random. Uh, that's a deep cut. You want to talk? You want to talk about guitar? Tech gear and I'll make some drinks for the boys. Sure, yeah, right. that sounds nice. All right. When did well, you start getting into to gear? That's a big thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm checked out. Yeah, bye. <laughs> Here, thanks. Oh man, guitar gear. God. Um, 
So let's see, I got my first electric guitar, my own electric guitar, when I was like 15 or 16. And that really wasn't the, that really wasn't gear addiction yet. I was like just I just needed an electric guitar. Yeah. This little Les Paul. It was like a thin Les Paul, like a real thin one. The for some it was Gibson. I got it from Chips Music actually. Um, but it was like flat. Like it didn't have any it didn't have any sort of radius or arch on, on, on the body. And it was real th- kind of thin. Oh yeah, it's like the melody makers kinda. Of. Kinda, yeah, but it had two humbuckers instead of okay. uh, what, the melody makers got like one or yeah. two. Um, so that really wasn't the beginning of the, the gear stuff. I think the gear stuff started clicking in with Spore, and I started buying bass pedals. And then I started having to do research on what pedals are good for bass and guitar, because everyone just has guitar pedals. And I was like, okay. So I started looking for like bass distortion and bass overdrive and bass synth. And all these, all these things just started popping up out of the woodwork. I'm like, okay. So I had this Mark Bass Super Synth. I had this Ibanez bass distortion and i had chorus and pitch shifters and like all this crazy stuff for bass first because i wasn't playing guitar for anyone because everyone plays guitar so i'm so i'm like building up my bass my bass i'm building up my bass and i start looking into you know i always played the same bass i always had a jazz bass and that was like years and years of a jazz bass. It had Bartolini pickups in it, and it was really low output, which I didn't really understand at the time. And I always put Black Beauty strings on it. Oh, yeah. I think I think I put Black Beauty strings on it because Dave McSweeney was using Black Beauties. And I was like, well, Dave uses Black Beauties. I'll use Black Beauties. Why not? And, and come to find out, they're like very warm tone because they're coated. Yeah. Um, and they lasted a really long time, too, and they looked cool because they were black. So I used those for a while. But I never like I could never figure out why my tone wasn't bright enough or loud enough. Yeah. And I have low output bass with warm strings. Yeah. Like not realizing these things. So I'm overcompensating with all these pedals. I'm like, all right, let's turn this way up and turn this way up. And that's kind of like how my pedals started. I was like, ooh, I need a new pedal for this and I need a pedal for that. And this song needs this and I want one of these. And I just started using my money for pedals and equipment. And then as I started playing more guitar, um, well, you know what? I started working at Guitar Center. That's what really, like, That's, amped it up. That'll do it. It yeah. really made it crazy because I had a great discount, and I had access to a million options to be like, ooh, let's try this, let's try that, let's try this. Right. And so I could listen to, like, the difference between, you know, this transistor and that resistor and this. So I'm like, okay, I definitely want uh, this type of clone, and I want this type of, like, because most pedals are based off of, what, like, five or most overdrives are based off of, like, five different. Yeah, circuits. everything's like, just yeah. trying to do the same thing. Yeah. yeah, they're all trying to do the same thing with a different shell. Yeah, to exactly. To look cool, a different access. And when I started realizing that, I was like, all right, well, let me just pick ones that I like the look of that do what I need them to do. And that kind of worked for a while, just like looking at pedals and be like, this one sounds cool. It works like clearly the pedal knows what to do more than I do. So like I'll just kick the knobs around and see what happens. Um, then I started realizing less is more, right? So I started shrinking my pedals. Man, Thank you, sir. Like oh, going, going. What? Uh, you ran out of mix? Yeah, so I said straight to Kilo. You want some of my mix? I'm good. Okay. I can make that work. But, so I start realizing, like, I went, I went, this is how I like to do things. Go way too far, bring it back in. Yeah, that's and how you gotta do go it. go back far out again, and then bring it back in. So right now I have a bunch of pedals, but I actually, I think I have like three or four I'm not using right now, but. I like that synth pedal that you're using. You do? That's the boss, that's the boss one. Boss oh yeah, the, what, which the synth? Uh, what's it called? The yeah. Sy two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. really or really SY1. cool. Yeah, those are those are sweet. Yeah, it came out like two or three years ago. It's got like 121 sounds on it. Jesus. But uh, it's it's because it's two eleven knob. Oh okay. Voices. Well, uh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. You walk up. Because they're not sounds. <laughs> they're voices <laughs> or patches or pads or yes or patches. That's patches. Right. You're right. You're right. You got it. Right it can there. be a patch. Yeah. So so I, my first synth pedal was that Mark Bass Super Synth. Yeah. Which the tracking started. It started becoming latent on me because I think I used it too much, which I didn't know was a thing. I don't even know if it is a thing, but I felt like over the course of time the pedal got slower at reading my input, and I have no idea why or if i dropped it or what the deal is but it could have been the hardware going bad it could have been just well i spore sometimes i forget how many gigs spores played like calford calford has played a good amount of gigs 
And, you know, I use the pedals kind of the way they're supposed to be used and not like sport. I was just like, yeah. like let's see what it does. Yeah. And um, Calford, I feel like I dial my stuff in more appropriately. Greenhouse Lounge, I had to create a whole section of my pedal board for Greenhouse Lounge. I have like about, like on a pedal board this, this big. I have about this much for pedals just for greenhouse. Yeah, because it's, wow. it's all the effects and that you can think of. Yeah, yeah, it's like synth. I have my synth and I have my control pedal, and then I have a, a combo wet pedal. It's pretty much delay, reverb, and course phaser, uh, whatever. And that's like it has like its own section. Um, but I've always messed around with routing, right? Like I love like yeah. routing pedals crazy. So one of my favorite setups I ever had was uh, for bass, actually. Um, it was when I first got into Calford, I started buying a bunch of p guitar pedals because I just wanted guitar pedals now because I'm a guitarist now and bass is for yesterday. Yeah. Right. Uh, and so so I just started buying guitar equipment and I had a Buddha with KT66 tubes in it, which was amazing. I, I should have never sold it. I think I played that pedal briefly, actually. The No, no, the amp. Oh, the, the amp. The Buddha okay, amp. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, you might have seen the amp for a second. Yeah, we were we did know each other back then for a yeah. little bit. Oh yeah, I think you brought it into Guitar Center or something. I don't yeah, remember. I sold it to Guitar Center like an idiot. Okay, that's what it was. Um, I actually didn't make it past. Um, what was the guy who used to run the floor there? Mark Ray. Ray uh, Myers. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Like, I wanted to bring it in. I wanted to bring it in, and Ray was like, "No, I think I want that." I was like, "Okay, crap, shouldn't have sold it." Um, but either way, so I had. All these guitar things I'd been buying for Calford because Calford had just started. We were called Delta Wolf. Back yeah, then. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. That's so, we actually did a show with you guys. Band name. Delta Wolf. Oh my god, that yeah. band sounds horrifying. Delta Wolf. Yeah, it was pretty sick. We have shirt. We maybe a shirt or two somewhere. Yeah. I still have one. The sleeves aren't on it anymore. But um, so I had all these guitar pedals, and Spore had a couple shows, and we were playing. I think one of Stuart Beck's uh, "Pass the Goods." And I decided this time I'm going to stereo split my chain. I'm going to go half my signal, all my synth. Everything's simultaneous. It's all mono until it hits this one. I can't remember what pedal I used to have that did it. I think it was either a chorus or something. And that was like the one stereo pedal I had. And so I could split my line from there. And so I'd send all my overdrives and all my really heavy stuff you wouldn't really you kind of lose bottom on to my guitar amp and i'd send all my lows and all my synthy stuff and all sorts of crazy stuff to my bass amp that's pretty cool so all my like like where your bass amp would have to be try to producing try to produce overdrive and distortion all that tone is coming from my guitar amp now and i'll just comb all the low end off so i don't blow my speaker on that right because you don't want to send that low frequency through a guitar speaker so much and then i'll send all my lows to my bass amp so i had two rigs that i would use for bass and that was like easily the best tone i've ever had in my life on a bass rig but it was so much rig like it was so much yeah it's hard to take the gigs and it's just a lot it's a process i used it like four or five times and it was sick like it was amazing and the sound guys were like is this for real i'm mean, again yeah, mike both well this one's di mike that one and then by the time they were done with it like oh yeah i like blending in the guitar amp for yeah. i'm like yeah because it's like the highs come out way better yeah. on the amp like the highs on bass amps unless you have a tube bass amp tube bass amp <laughs> <laughs> it's like not as sweet as like a guitar amp like the, the highs aren't you know, it doesn't do the same thing. Yeah, it doesn't cut as much. But I, I stopped doing that because it was inconvenient. Then I was like, well, maybe I just don't really need any of this stuff. I'm like, let's see what I can do without pedals. Yeah. What I can do with just an amp with a guitar and with a bass without pedals. Now I still play bass without pedals. Yeah. Like most of the bass gigs I take, I don't need pedals for it. Yeah. Spore, I'll need them. Spore, because I need like crazy energy, crazy overdrive. Right. Octaves. Well, yeah, it's like, it's like most of the projects you're doing now on bass don't really require no, any of that kind of stuff. No, not at all. You know? But so. for guitar, it does. Absolutely. Yeah. Guitar, I need like, I'm pretty much good. Like I got, I mean, it's, I like, I, I used to have four over different overdrives on my board because I, every room, the overdrives would sound different and I like this one and that day and I like this overdrive that day. And then I realized I could just leave them at home and just like figure it out later. Yeah. So now, now I'm just using one. It's like a fuzz overdrive. 
and then like most of my overdrives and fuzzes are very dynamic. Like if I put my gain at zero, it's very, very minimal gain. And if I put it all the way up, it's like blowing your head off. I don't really have anything that's like a tube screamer or anything. I got the JHS PG-14, that Paul Gilbert special. Oh, nice. Yeah. So that one's like, it's got a nice vintage vibe, but it goes anywhere from clean, like just a little bit to like completely exploding. Yeah. And then the Hawaiian pizza, which has now become my go-to. I noticed that. I just noticed it said Hawaiian pizza. I'm like, yeah. oh, that's cool. What does that do? And it's a, it it's a voltage. It just looks cool. It yeah. does look cool. Yeah. It does look cool. And I didn't realize until the other day, but he uses the Dumble font. Like oh, very okay. Small. But it doesn't – it's not what he's trying to do. Yeah. It's not it at all. Yeah. It's um, input, output, and voltage. Those are the knobs you get. Okay. And it goes everywhere from, like, slight chimey overdrive to exploding fuzz. Like, completely – like, it sounds like your pedal is completely broken. Um, because yeah, the voltage control. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, and it's amazing. Like you roll, you roll your volume off, and it disappears. It just goes back to regular guitar. Oh, that's but, awesome. I mean, that's what I. It's taken me years to get to that point where I just have two overdrives. Yeah, I have a bunch of other stuff going on, but. Yeah, I mean, it's like I, I went on. A, I went on a binge for a while when I got a job at Sam Ash, and I was younger, and, and I discovered like gear in general i mean i had a couple of things but i didn't really know anything about gear until i started working in sales and sam ash and number one you had to learn the gear because you had to be able, you had to be able to sell it yeah you know so as i started learning about the different guitars and the different pickups and the output uh and uh the, the output and pickups and the, what, what what that actually means and then learning about the pedals and what they actually do and and you know why some pedals are worth more than others and it's just like it's, it's an entire thing to learn I, I dug really really deep i got like obsessed with like hand wound pickups i got obsessed with like with like um analog overdrives and and it becomes and obsessive yeah in nature it, like yeah it's like more i need better I yeah need more need better. i need better yeah, I, started I, need more. Reading, I started going on forums just doing all this research and and then i wasn't getting what i was looking for then i just started practicing more and i was like oh well if i can just like become a better player i don't have to worry so much about like because it, for me, it wasn't about like it wasn't about the sound as much. It was just like, I wasn't able to play very well. You know what I mean? It wasn't that I needed a sound for a specific thing. It wasn't that I was like trying to get like I didn't know what I was trying to sound because I didn't I wasn't able to play very well. So it was like it's just all, this whole thing. And then, and then, <laughs> wait, wait, let me get this straight. You're buying pedals because because I want to sound better. You just wanted to compensate. For, yeah, ex- for your. Yeah, dude, pedals are like colors. Like if you don't know how to paint, you still don't know how to paint. If I you're know, buying. I know. Blue is gonna be blue whether you know how to paint. That with was it or not. that like, was an expensive lesson that I learned because yeah. I spent so much money on like new, like on all kinds of pickups, all kinds of pedals, oh, amplifiers, just to, be better. just to try and sound better. And I was like, I was like, wait, if I just practice more. I can sound like I can make pretty. You can you can work with pretty much anything. Obviously, yeah. obviously, there's like there's like something that you're trying to go for after a while. Where you're like, okay, after you discovered like how you play and what what sounds you want to go for, there are pedals that you get that can do those things better than the other. But I wasn't there yet. I was just yeah. like, I need to learn how to play guitar, and I'm just gonna do buy all this other shit to make me sound better. You know yeah, what I mean, people do that all the time. Yeah, all the time. And some of the best players I've ever seen in my life can take a piece of crap. And make it sound amazing. Yeah, 100%. It, it's, but, you know, if all the people who bought pedals to sound better because they didn't realize they could just practice, stop buying pedals, people will be going out of business. Yeah, for sure. You, you, sure. you got to have the people who are just buying pedals because, oh, I want that. Yeah, those are my favorite people to sell shit to. Well, I yeah. work at Sam Ash and Guitar Center. Yes, I guess so. For sure. You also own a lot of guitars, too. No, that's the funny part. I don't have part. a fucking horse in this race at yeah. all. <laughs> I'm trying really hard to, to it's a, well, We can change something. races. We can no, change no, no, races. No, 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 no. I was just wondering, because uh, the only thing I can compare what you said to is, like, what keyboardists do is they just get a new keyboard. Yeah. Like, that's going to fix everything. That's basically the same thing. Because I yeah. thought... Because I had, I did have a micro Korg XL, which is like baby time frolics, those synthesizers. It cost three hundred dollars. I got a uh, thanks Obama by for the rebate. I got that, and so I went to school. They gave me three hundred fifty bucks. I'm like, I'm buying a micro Korg, and I use that. Micro Korgs are great. They're yeah. fat. And I saved up my uh, to get the virus Ti2. Yeah, it's, it's a like monster. The best thing that you can get, and I got it. And I'm like. I don't know how to use it. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, but, it's full of settings and it's got its yeah. own brain. So I kind of agree with you. Like obviously about the whole like they're for they're painting with colors. Yeah. You, know, like a painter, yeah. you can't. But I think uh, uh, you can also make you better because you, they can. you, you have to yeah. you have to practice with it and everything like that. That's true. And, and that's certain- that's why I'm good at subtractive synthesis now is because of this keyboard and everything like that. Yeah. I know how to make a sound. Yeah. 
Right. That's very hard. It's to do. true. <laughs> it allows you to be better because it yeah. forces you to learn how exactly, to use it. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's it's it, I I know what you're talking about. Like people, I'll, I'll see keyboardists that I know. They're like, oh, I'm getting this new keyboard. I'm like, cool. And then I'm like, what are you doing with it? And yeah. Like, yeah. Gonna have it. I'm just gonna have it. Yeah. Okay. That's what I used to do with guitar pedals all the time. Yeah. It seems like that. Like, that's the th- same thing. But those guitar pedals are nowhere near as expensive as the synthesizers are. Uh, no, not like that. No. no. Just the thing, we, the thing is, we have to like we have to have a lot of different pedals. So it ends up being a similar thing. It's like, okay, we, this over, if you want a good overdrive pedal, when did they start making pedals? Uh, oh my God. Like the sixties. Really? That, yeah. That the early? first one was like a, f- um, oh my God. If, if JH, if Josh Scott was watching this, he'd chew my head off. But I think it's like, I think they, the first pedal they tried to make was supposed to be a, f- a fuzz or a, w- it was either the wah or the fuzz. And it was supposed to, the whole point was to make your guitar sound like some sort of brass instrument. Oh, and all really? of it, that all was like the first purpose of yeah. like one of the pedals. Wow. But it turns that's, out that they kinda, were way off. That's yeah. kind of how synthesizers kind of started, too. They were trying they were to, trying to be... make like brass and everything like that. Right. Uh, or orchestral type yes. sounds. Kind of like the way like an organ was, like electric organ right. was. Yeah. But uh, – uh, that that's all a pedal really is is just a little oscillator, isn't it? Oh my god! Or it, it's just like it's all just an electric grid. And yeah, it's electric grid. That's yeah, just that's all a keyboard is. Yeah, really. and yeah. So. depending on what the pedal does, it does it like like an overdrive pedal just boosts your signal to sound like you're actually driving but the it's amplifier. Just, it's just like a like transistors and stuff. In yeah, there. that's yeah. all it is. Right? Exactly. Yeah, just com- different combinations of that. Yeah. Like the, the funny part is, for how much I know about pedals, I really don't know anything. Like yeah. you open one up, and for some reason I haven't learned yet, but I'm pretty much. I mean, it's a different. I'm type lost of back there. Like yeah. I know, I know that I like these pedals and I like those pedals and what these are for and how to utilize this. Yeah, of course. But when I open one up, I'm like, uh, yeah, that man. looks broken. That's how I am with amplifiers too. It's like I know what amps do what. I know how to dial in the sound that I want to get. But if something happens to it, I'm Kinda, just like, I don't know what to do here. I, I fixed my own amp. I got lucky with that. Yeah. Um, I watched a YouTube video, and it, pretty much I just needed to clean out my tube couplings that pretty much fixed my problem but That's i didn't crazy. know how to do that so yeah. i like watched these like spray deoxid d5 and the tube couplings and scrub it out with these little toothbrush things that i got and i'm like okay well, i thought it was really interesting like uh like bob moog for example yeah. like he doesn't really he doesn't really play music at all really no no he way no he doesn't so like he he just invented like synthesizers like the first like synthesizer ever he just like invented the like the what do you call it the schematic and then he was like, "Okay, I want to make this, just just to be like, hey, and it can it can mathematically make music, but it's just like a, a total, Change totally different like uh, mindset of like being mechanically inclined versus artistically inclined. You're right. right. I don't know. I think that's why Leonardo da Vinci was so creative and popular because he could do both, or yeah. something, or genius. I don't know what I'm trying to get at here, <laughs> but I, I know like exactly what you're talking about. Like, I, I'm terrified of taking my keyboard oh, apart. Yeah. Like, that, that's that's because it's all computers even, and everything. Yeah, yeah. synthesis like, is another type of. Yeah, that's a whole, but that's yeah. all it is. It's just a giant pedal, really, with a, a bunch of, of space them, yeah. bars. You see a yeah. bunch of space bars? Yeah, but a bunch of space. That's what uh, Donnie always tells me. Is you just press the space bars up there? I'm like, yeah. Call me, call me Billy like Samples. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Billy Samples. Billy Samples. What? Oh man, there was some. Oh, I watched the. Have you seen the new? Oh, this is way off topic. Have you seen That's the okay. new, seen new Borat yet? Yes. Okay. Uh, I haven't uh, watched it yet. No. Oh, is it good? Well, yes. The, it's pretty what good. made me laugh for like forever was that there was uh, somebody that he referred to in his village as Billy Sex Crime, and I want, <laughs> I want, I want that nickname so bad. Billy no. Sex Crime. That's a terrible nickname. <laughs> it's like the village rapist or something like oh that. It's called Billy Sex Crime. Billy yeah, Sex it sounds, like a, it sounds like a great nickname to have. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. It's like even if you don't want the attention, now you have it. Yeah, totally. Anyways, what? that's what it reminded me of. Good. That was good. Yeah. Billy <laughs> 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 Sex I don't want to be Billy Sex Crime. No, so you don't. Back. No, you don't. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but the movie before that's pretty good. It's uh, all right. It's pretty funny how they – yeah, I cool. won't give it away. Yeah, no, no spoilers. Really. No spoilers. Yeah, no they, they, was it on they Netflix? Get yeah, they get they it. it's, it's pretty crazy. It's uh, no, it's on Amazon. Amazon. Oh, okay, cool. I can download it for free. But uh, yeah. <coughs> um, all right. So back to the music stuff. Yeah. Uh, what's going on with Calford Town? You guys have yeah, that's um, any shows yeah, coming absolutely. up? Absolutely. Or uh, okay, we're, do, we're playing December fourth in nineteen oh four. Um, I think we're trying to get a couple other bands on that. Um, I kind of know who we're gonna who we're gonna get, but I'm I'm not a hundred percent. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're 100%, but I don't want to say anything before yeah, they commit course, to it. Of course. Um, so we got December 4th coming up. We want to do um, like some 
some other, you know, we need to do out of Jacksonville stuff. Like yeah. we need to get. It's not that we need to get out of Jacksonville, but we need to go out of Jacksonville for a little bit. Well, Where can you go now, though? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I'm kind of like, I know Florida's crazy. We'll just do whatever we want. But, like, we kind of want to play Savannah, and we yeah. kind of want to play down south. Like, it'd be cool. I just don't, you know, I'm not – for some reason, I've made it this far without being that good at booking stuff, like, which is a huge thing. What? You should, you should be good at booking things. Like, no, I mean, not necessarily. I, think I don't know a, how to do it either. I don't know how to. It's a, it's a different. It's a different side of, of the whole thing. You know, it's yeah. like there's one thing like playing an instrument and being good at being like the hired gun to, and, and playing your role in yeah. that regard. And then there's people that are more inclined to the business side of it, where it's just like you know, like you know how to make the phone calls and it's it's about being persistent. You know, there's a lot of trial and error and, uh, you know, Uh-oh. oh that that sh- it happens. It's fine. No. Uh, it's a lot of trial and error and just kind of going through the motions. You know, I didn't know what I was doing either when I first started doing it. You start reaching out to people, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, okay. So you get a response, and that kind of gives you the fuel to go on to the next one. And then it's just, you know, it's just about persistence. Just getting started. Just maybe. reaching it out, reaching out, you know. All I do when I, whenever I book tours or whenever I book runs is just I find the places in the area that I think that I do research on the area, find out what bands are playing where, and find out who's doing the booking at those places, and then I just send them an email. If I don't hear back in a week, I send them another email. If I don't hear back in a week, I send them another email until I get something. And sometimes they're just like, yo, stop hitting me up. I'm going <laughs> to book your band. That, that's happened to me several times. Sometimes it's just like it's like they, they just never get back to you. You just give up. They just get bogged down. Yeah. Other times they get back to say, oh, hey, uh, sorry for the, for the late response. Uh, yeah, we can do this or this and this. Or they just straight up tell you, like, I don't think you're right for this market right now. Let me know when you played a couple shows and you can – you know, we, we can do some numbers, you know. So it's like just it's just, just about doing that, you know. Yeah, I do it every once in a while, but I always feel like there's someone else who does it more. I think Calford, I have to uh, take more of the authority there because for some reason I have more, like, booking experience. Which well, you've been in bands that probably traveled a bit more. And, I have, and I've, I've got to watch Chris Richard do it for years, and I know Jeremy did it for a while. And so, like, kind of watching them just, like, get on their computer and hone down on emails and just – until everything's like ready to roll i'm like oh it really is just grinding on the computer like yeah and making sure you, you look good on social media yeah you know, like having I'm a, terrible social media right now like having i'm an EPK so i'm getting and, better are yeah, you, you get, yeah you finally learned about hashtags yeah they're important i always <laughs> thought uh they weren't that's <laughs> not the end of that so yeah, uh, no, i said People don't understand about so, so we. So this is actually a good a good topic because will you people, teach me and Steve about social media? I'm terrible. I'm still doing a lot. Of, I'm still we, learning it yeah. myself. Yeah, okay. you're, st- you're sitting on your right, glasses, tough guy. Don't need to say that. Those who don't know, uh, this is all ri- designer rip off. By the oh, way, oh yeah, no, it's all phony baloney. <laughs> yeah. You just got to make it look real. Um, yeah. No, so I'm, st- I'm still doing a lot of research in the social media and myself, but I know that there's wa- there's things that you can do that will get you shadow banned on Instagram and Facebook if you're What'd not you doing say? it correct. Shadow banned. What does that mean? Okay. Shadow banned means that Instagram and Facebook will purposely hide your posts because you're acting. It's un- probably already. You're thing, advertising right? too hard. Well, not advertising too hard. It's just it's a matter of how you're. Yeah, technically it might be that it's it's like how you're using your hashtags. So for instance, with with most of the posts that I put for side hustle, I'll put side hustle the band as one of the hashtags. Okay. Right. Um, if I put side hustle the band as the first hashtag, every single post. Okay. I I look or I'm acting like a robot. So Instagram uh, is like, oh, uh, bot, bot, hide that. So it's like if, if I'm going if I if I follow like I do this thing every every few weeks I'll I'll kind of follow a bunch of people on on Instagram with side hustle that I th- that that I think might be interested in side hustle I have a whole thing about that a whole science and how I do that as well is really got interesting. He's got it all figured out, man. But, I don't. But, but, like but the, the problem is if 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 no, yeah right look at my page and see how much of an influencer I am. Yeah. Uh, but if you, if you see but Big time. if if I if I follow more than like fifty people in a day Instagram's like robot. So uh, hide them. So you just have to be careful about like there. There's a way to do things. You just have to be careful about how you're doing it, so you don't get shadow banned. And they don't tell you that you're shadow banned either. You'll just stop seeing responses on your shit. Uh, so I, I have hence you the know, shadow. Yeah, it's like Instagram's like you know we we have like 1,300 followers on Instagram. It's like why am I only getting five likes on this thing? The the, the percentages that you should 10 percent of people 10 percent of your followers should be engaging with with your posts. So 10 percent of That's it? yeah. 
that that that's about what Instagram unless you're paying for it that's about what they're giving you at Facebook okay. and Instagram so if you're seeing less than that there's a problem so interesting wow yeah there's so a lot kinda, more to this than I thought social media is an, an entire there's a science to it man it's crazy I don't like it see that's why I keep avoiding it because I'm just like I'll just keep trying to do my music side of things and hopefully the internet side of things will fix it but in reality if you I could get my internet side to work, then I'd play more music. Yeah, because you have to be proactive. You know, it's no. like you have to, you have to, you know that that's where the mar- that's where the market's at today is in social media. Uh, we the days of you know being really good and and playing shows and hoping somebody finds you are over. You got yeah. you have to you have to build your brand on social media. Have a good website. Have a good EPK. Just look at these dickheads that are like super famous on Instagram. Like what are they yeah. not even doing? They don't do anything. They're just good at Instagram. They're just good at They're Instagram. Just good at Instagram. I know. My good favorite thing it makes me crazy. My I'm not, favorite thing. Are the, are, I'm peanut butter and jealous about it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> peanut butter I'm just like, That's but at the same one. time, yeah. like I don't want to. I don't want to do that. So it's not fun. It's not fun. YouTube is a much. completely different ball game than Instagram yeah. or Facebook. Also, yeah. YouTube is like because you can actually monetize that. So it's a lot harder to get your to get subscribers on there, and there's all kinds of tags, and there's like there's like a, a browsers thing that I have uh, called TubeBuddy that'll actually like it was showing me this. The you other can day. put in keywords, and it'll show you if that tag is good for your post, and how uh, many people are using that tag. Uh, how how it's a buddy. yeah, it's a buddy. It, it'll literally tell you it's like, did, will this a- optimize uh, you in the search engine? Like how how like how much does this help you in that world? It's the whole thing is like it's it's so. It's so crazy, but that's that's where it's at today. You have to, and to be honest with you, like we're complaining about it, but really, it's like the easiest thing in the world. Once it's you easy, get at it's it. hard for us for some reason because we never do it. It's it's right. It's not that. It's more of like it just doesn't make any sense, and that's what I agree with. Like this is stupid. Like I will say that it's, yeah, stupid. it's stupid. It doesn't make sense. Bah. But the fact that is, you if you get it. good at it. The whole learning experience is free. You don't have to pay anything for it, and you just just do it. It's yeah. all it's all ground based. You can literally go on YouTube and he just convinced type me of that because I was just like I fucking hate all of this. I'm just like fuck it. I'm just gonna if they didn't like my music, they like my music. Otherwise, you know, yeah, know. but you can't Not do how that it works anymore. anymore. So y'all, y'all have bathroom breaks on the show? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah you, you, you gotta you do. Yeah, go to the bathroom. Right. Oh, it's quick. right in the center. Man. Yeah, but I mean that's 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 unfortunately what you have to do these days is just like like build your social media shit to like. Like nobody's gonna care about your brand if you don't put it out there to be seen. I know. You know? It's not really fair, is it? I actually like it because it puts more of the control in your own hands. I, I I can see how you think that because you're the one who's doing the posts and you're doing everything and you can even uh uh you know pay for advertisement and everything like that. Yeah, you said but you're your silly if you think that you uh have control over it. Like for sure, Instagram or Facebook, YouTube, they are the ones who are in control of this. Yeah. Like the, you do not have control. Well, of over course not. Does. But ultimately, you at wanna any use point in time they could just change their algorithm or change something like I that, understand. and then you have to relearn everything. You just have to be so on it's top. Fucked. They, but they send I you, hate but it. They send you notifications when they do that. So you just so you read it. Yeah. And then, but also, you know, the idea is to use Facebook and Instagram to get uh, to to drive people to your website. Once you have your website, and and that is a self a self running machine where you can put all your content on. There's no need for Facebook or Instagram anymore. You make all your money through your website. I get it. So it's like th- those are just the it's driving free forces to get platform. there. No, it's not free most of the time. If you want to get if you want to get the views on, I mean, it's free to have the account. Yeah. If you want to get seen on those on those sites, yeah. you have to pay for the advertising most of the time. So you get a video out. You don't just put the video out and hope it get you know into the ether and hope it gets seen. You right. should do a paid sponsorship uh, sponsored post on it, well, or put it on YouTube and drive people to your YouTube channel. So eventually you get monetized on YouTube. You know, that's the that's the big one right now. Right, yeah, and so you actually get money off of it. Yeah, that's what I always just didn't understand about these Instagram accounts that have like a million f- followers and stuff like that. Like, are they getting? How are they getting? Are they getting paid off of that? I don't know if Instagram is paying them or not, but but people are paying them to. But a brand for like but, advertising. But yeah, exactly. On those back. platforms. <laughs> so that's that that's that's where it's at, man. I mean that. That was something I actually wanted to touch base on. I do hate honest. it though, and it's I still th- I'm on your side that I still think it it's just stupid. Frustrates me when I get on it. Like I open up Facebook, and the first thing it does is frustrate me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you have to unfollow all the crazy shit. Uh, it, people that post so much about politics and all that, I unfollow all that. Whether I agree with it or not, I unfollow all of it, and I just it's keep my shit with people that I'm like minded with, or just you know whatever. It's like I just it just gets stressful real quick. Yeah. Just use it for your, just use it as a platform to promote your own shit. That's all it is. Just and and Facebook is like not even where it's at. Instagram, uh, unfortunately, TikTok, as well. 
um, and YouTube. It's it's all unfortunate that it has to happen this way. But this is where it's at. So you have to adapt, or you don't compete. You know, adapt or die, right? Yeah, exactly. I just want to look at puppies. Huh? On Instagram. Do you smell like puppies? puppies? Yeah. If you posted a picture of a puppy with background music that was yours. Ooh. Hang on. See, you bro, you got a, it. You you, you get think, it. Do you think I can make a living off that? See, that's what I don't know. I was about to say, <laughs> I quit bro, you, that. You, you, you got it. Now you just got to do it. You know what I mean? Oh. That's all it is. Wow. Yeah, the doing is the hard part, right? It, it really is. You know it's what it is? A it's, motivational. It, I am. it is. Well, no, it's because, like, unfortunately, like... Like like every artist and musician has this kind of like weird insecurity of like putting their shit out there and getting yep. rejected. Yeah, that's another yep. big part of it. You know, too. so it's like yep. so it's don't a, look at it till it's ready. Yeah, yeah, and we and we also just feel weird about promoting ourselves. Yeah, right. It's like, it's like this weird ego thing. It's like yeah. oh, I don't want to come off as like you know I'm too doesn't like who cares? Everybody else out there is doing it that way. Just just control your ego and put your shit out there and do it. I was going through the same like 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 obstacle in my own mind for a long time. And it was like, well, if people like the music, they'll like it and it'll get heard. Blah, blah, blah. Get over all that shit. Get over the rejection side of it because you're going to get rejected. Get over the whole like weird, I don't want to promote myself. It's, it looks egotistical kind of thing. Get over all of it and just shamelessly put yourself out there. That's what I'm missing. Yeah. It's got to do it. Shame. Do you you got to do it one time. <laughs> just just one time, and all of a sudden, it all goes out the window. Maybe I should. Have just do you ever around. wonder, like, uh, what it would be like if, like, famous dead people had Instagrams? Like, if, uh, <laughs> uh, like, Kurt Cobain had an Instagram? Oh, my God. I bet that'd be, that'd be a great one. <laughs> do you think he'd be just, like, probably, sad, like, dreary filters? 100%. And, like, yeah. He might be alive today if he had the, uh, the outlet to, you know. Yeah, so people would have been help. checking in on him. Yeah. yeah. Or his whore wife. <laughs> Uh-oh. Are we getting into conspiracy theory? Uh, it's not a theory. Okay. What, she killed him, right? He's left-handed. I'm just saying. You've seen the suicide. Bill, Billy had, Billy had an unpopular opinion one week where he said conspiracy theories are not right. real because if they're – no, no, we're not doing it right oh, now. If, if you believe saying, in one, then you, you have believe to believe all, all of them. them. So are you saying that you believe this one? Yeah. Then, which means you believe all conspiracy theories now, right? No. Well, That's, there, there's, a whole, there's a whole theory. It's not theory. Uh, it's like some method where if too many people are aware – of the conspiracy theory, then it's no longer a conspiracy. It like, yeah, it changes the way it's perceived. Like if um, if like a million people know that UFOs are real, it's not a conspiracy. Yeah, but, exactly. But for some reason, but it, you know, I don't, I can't remember. There's a name for it and like a whole like method of it. Oh, it's, really? Yeah, yeah. It's like a thing. So I'm in the I'm in the clear then. If there's if there's Netflix documentaries about it, more than one. I'm in the clear. Sure. I mean, look. That's that's the. That's There's the, the plenty of JFK documentaries. Ooh. And yeah. a movie actually by Oliver Stone called JFK. Yeah, I've never seen it. Nice. Neither have I, but it's about the conspiracy theory. What about the Jimmy Hoffa with the Irishman? Jimmy Hoffa is another one. Yeah. I was. I like that version. That, yeah, for sure. Wait, Jimmy Hoffa never died. No, the, no, he, he died. He was, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sorry to ruin it for you, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops! Spoiler alert. Oh man. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know. Jimmy Hoffa went mysteriously missing 40 years ago. Yeah, my bad. Uh, <laughs> anyways, yeah, it's just like it's just. I don't know about that, about the Kurt Cobain one. Your the dude was depressed as fuck. Good. My what? Your hand soap smells good. Thank well, you. I, 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 I'm curious. I, I'm curious to know what the incentive for her killing him was. I never saw the documentaries. She's so. crazy. Okay, but I mean, wh- where's what's the motive, though? Th- I just told you. Is she just crazy? She's well, crazy that give her and a- jealous and just everything. Yeah. <sighs> you think it was jealousy? Yeah. For sure, just, she was a musician so you don't think too. She just like bleed him dry and like like try to live vicariously. They're already married. As soon as he dies, he she gets everything. That's yeah. the end of it. That's, that's true. terrible. Like that's I really don't that's want that motive. to be true. Yeah, there's a lot of motive and thing. Have you ever seen the documentary? I can't remember what it's called, but uh, uh, which one it is. But they go and interview Courtney Love's uh, father. They interview all these people saying like all these great things about Courtney Love. Like she would never do it. And then they go to her father. It's like, oh yeah, for sure she did it. She's totally <laughs> capable of doing that. Yeah, that's, that's really funny. So funny. I trust him. Yeah. He's a dad. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Maybe He's seen it. May, maybe he did kill himself, but that suicide note is a little weird. That's all I'm trying to say. I, have to I know when he was it. doing like a bunch of heroin, right? Yeah, so why not just do too much of that instead? Yeah, right. Like, why would you if you're gonna if you're gonna be addicted to heroin and then oh, this is gonna sound funny. If you're gonna be addicted to heroin yeah. and then kill yourself, why would you not just use the heroin yeah, to kill exactly, yourself? Why would yeah. you? Did you run out? No, you have plenty of money. Oh, I think she did also, it. You might be right. Like, like he was sad and everything like that, but. Depression's Not bad. That's sad. You don't know that. You don't know that. Yeah, depression's none of us it, know that. Yeah, no one knows that. That's he true. Had a, had a daughter and everything. Doesn't and matter. I, just, I don't know, man. It's just hard to Who imagine knows? him at like twenty seven. Depression's years an old, intense like he's thing. That sad that he's like a super fucking famous. Yeah, man. you never know, man. You'd be surprised. You never know. 
You'd it be surprised. Is it more likely that somebody killed him? No, I, I don't. That's the problem. You don't know about the suicide You're right. stuff. You're right. But You're maybe right. that's why she killed him because she could use his depression as like an angle. To, yeah, exactly. Like, or maybe she was herself. just fucking. I mean, look, she has a lot. Of, she has a lot of angles that what she can she use. What does she do now? Is she around? Her. Do people give her crap? I don't know. She's she was on one of the roasts. I think uh, yeah. well, the Comedy Central roast. She was she roasting. Was or roasted. She, she was roasting. She's yeah. definitely not getting roasted. Are you kidding me? Oh. That would be a catastrophe. She was getting roast of Courtney Love. Oh my Everyone gosh! Just shows up Are like you serious? Like, yeah, it would be terrible. It would be a. a it would. You can't roast people who are who are too easy to roast. Yeah, right? exactly. Oh, Donald Trump did a, did one uh, a few years back. Nobody like really in got to him though that big. Well, it wasn't. I mean, it wasn't. They got to him, all right. They, you know, he had like a fucking laundry list of things that you can't talk about. They hit him on everything though. Not they didn't really. give a fuck. They hit him. Uh, did you watch it? Yeah, because I, I watched it again recently just to see. It was they got him pretty good, and also there was no respect for him either after no. the whole thing, which is fine. But I'm just saying, like, like it, it's usually like after everybody roasts the the, the person, it's like, oh, you know, I'm just fucking me, man. I love you, and you know, good luck they with didn't everything. Say that, None of that. It's like they just get done fucking with a big ass smirk on their face, like, yeah, mic drop, fuck you. Which sound guys hate when you do mic drops. Okay? <laughs> yeah, for sure. anyone's wondering, don't drop any don't mics drop when any you're mic- cool. And don't cup the fucking microphone. Yeah, like don't do asshole, it, bro. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> is this a bad idea? Yeah, <laughs> it's really basic. Yeah, and also they do it. feedback when you're doing just doesn't do Yo, yo, don't, yo. Don't do that shit. Um, all right, so we got to wrap it up soon. So we should get to unpopular opinions. Oh, yeah, wow. It, time time fly. flew again. That was a good one. That's my favorite thing to say when I'm drunk is time sure does go by fly. Anyways. <laughs> That's a good one. Thank you. All right, what's I was your first? drunk when I said that. What's your first unpopular <laughs> first opinion? Oh, yeah, sorry. And also, well, you know how it works, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I okay. think so. I'm going to try um, to think of a couple. Oh, okay. Well, don't worry, uh, I'll, uh, I'll come up with something. My first about one. Oh, <laughs> exactly. That's all it is. Y'all are going to hate this one. Uh, the Beach Boys are overrated. Oh. Not true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Immediately. It's uh, very unpopular uh, opinion. Wrong. I, are that, is it wrong? I don't know. Uh, I, I don't I, I'll so. meet you in the middle. I'm not a huge fan of Pet Sounds, but, I mean, they are such a talented band. I they just, were, were such a talented band. I think they're annoying. Yeah, well, you know, what are you do? It's like highly influential music. Yeah, at the very time. well produced. Sure. Very, I mean, the harmonies on that are like bar and none. That was my like, whole point. Is, is like, all it is is just a bunch of people. It's like a barbershop quartet to like the softest music. So, I think they're overrated. They're not like groundbreaking. We're to definitely me. rated. Yeah. Yeah, definitely <laughs> rated. The only song, the only song that I really like by the Beach Boys is that uh, I can't even remember the name of it, but it's it's one of Brian Wilson's like. Da, 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 the God only knows that song. Yeah, God only yeah. knows. knows. That's on Pet Sounds. It's a great. Uh, bro. I like that yeah. song. Brian Wilson's like regarded as one of the Surfing greatest songwriters. Surfing USA can suck it. Okay, that that's was like early Beach Boys. Horn. Yeah, that's like early Beach Boys or Fun, Fun, Fun till a Daddy Take the T Bird Away. Yeah, great song. That sounds like. Could you imagine like when that came out and everyone was like, Oh my God! Yeah, it's so racy and so crazy. Fun, <laughs> uh, <laughs> fun, fun. That sounds dirty. Wow. Yeah, sounds dirty. Oh my God! Uh, Brian Wilson, especially towards They're from the later California. Did yeah. you know that? <laughs> Oh, my God. Uh, Brian Wilson up until, like, or not up until, but, like, especially after the early Beach Boys years was regarded as one so one of the greatest songwriters of that time, man. I mean, he's. Yeah. Right. So and that's, I mean, a, that's a popular opinion. Like, yeah. yeah. People agree will, with like, that a lot. Yeah. yeah that's I guess cool. that's what's unpopular about right. it. Yeah. 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 I know that I was an unpopular opinion. That's what I'm trying to get yeah. at. Yeah. It's unpopular. I don't like, I don't, I never, don't I never like liked them. Hey, exactly. Yeah. All right. So, uh, my first unpopular opinion is I hate Bloody Marys. I do too. So they're disgusting. Two in this room, I guess. All uh, right. So that's well. Then the majority. I mean, I like Bloody Marys, but only I don't like them at night. Like the sun is down. No, they shouldn't be morning. drinking Bloody Marys. Yeah, it's like a I'm pretty sure. Yeah, the here sun is up. You got Bloody Marys. The sun goes down. If you're drinking a Bloody Mary when the sun goes down. It must be day three. I just, Come on. I just get, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it must be day three. <laughs> what do we got left to mix this vodka with? The guy that Tomato. Me, that's yeah. about it. I'll just drink it straight. I haven't at that had point. one since I was like 19, though. Yeah. So it might, I, I had one, I was like, gross. What's funny about that is uh, I always saw them in like cartoon shows and stuff like that, and I always thought they were like fruity, delicious drinks. So the first time I had one, I thought for sure that's what it was going to taste like. Oh, my God. It doesn't. It tastes no. like cold tomato soup. Yeah, yes, it's, it does. Yeah. <laughs> it gives you really bad heartburn, too, if you have good. Yes, it does. I don't get heartburn. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, Bill, what's your next one? Uh, um, 
Everybody should learn sign language, and there should be a universal sign language. There already is a universal sign language. That should people be popular. D- yeah, I, 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 exactly. Did you guys see uh, <laughs> there was uh, – Never pop- mind. That was a bad one. But, well, but it uh, should be popular. People just should do that. That's just Bill's Advice Corner. If it, <laughs> Bill's <laughs> Advice <laughs> Corner. I like that. New segment, Bill's yeah, Advice yeah. Corner. Oh, that's a good one. Learn right. sign language, everybody, people. Everybody should learn sign language, or at least another language. But imagine if everybody in the world – New sign language, like it would be very. You know what we should do is we all talk to each other. You know what we should yeah. do is. Well, well, there you go. That's, that's, universal. Not a, that's a universal sign right there. No, it's not. No, it's, it's, it's not. Does not translate. I don't think, I don't think so. I you don't might know. be right about that. Actually, did you guys see there, the there was uh, a <laughs> Rick and Morty? Yeah. There was. <laughs> there was I have a, five packs of Szechuan sauce in my house. By the way. <laughs> no kidding. There, there was yeah, a. Uh, there was a sign for sale too. There, there, there was a signer. They got. They got. Charged with like with like fraud. I guess he was like translating. I forget which which. Uh, uh, Don't hurt yourself. No, I think it was like. Can't remember who he was translating. Are you talking about like a court case or something? No, no, no. It was it was from it, w- it was like a pol- like a famous politician was like giving a speech. You're not it talking might- about the oh. enthusiasm where the, the where the the signer is distracting from everyone because she has a huge. No, 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 that's funny too. <laughs> but this guy about. was was like uh, I think he might have been signing, he might have been translating for Barack Obama in like South Africa or something. Not so, it's like it, I forget Either what it was. Yeah. yeah, but he was like, but it ended up like it, there was people that were watching that like, this guy's not not signing. It. This is all wrong. This is not even oh, real sign fraud. language. It's like, and we started. To, I was talking about. I was like, how do you get from like nowhere? To sign for for translating for the president of the United States of America no. on bullshitting. It was you know, really wait, weird. I think I do remember like this trigger. Like I feel like I remember what you're talking. Yeah, about. it's like it's it's how they get all the way there faking it. Yeah, like, it's a how do you do? Way. Yeah, you're you're literally translating for the, the most important person in the world, and you're faking it. How'd you get to that point? That's kind of crazy. I always thought it was There's strange no that deaf people at any of these things. Yeah, well, exactly. Call you out. Exactly. Yeah. They like as soon as the pandemic started to happen, you notice that like every time they had like a government official on on for every state that have a signer uh, doing it. I just didn't really understand it. Really? It, well, uh, it, like, well, it's in, like part of like in person. I get it. Like uh, talk, Like obviously, there's no captions in front of me right now. But like on TV, like if you have captions, yeah. I'm like, if you're deaf, you're gonna put captions on all, the whole no, time, right? But but the captions when it's when it's recorded live like that don't always translate properly. Uh, uh, no, because no. it's not a pre-written script. If you're watching a show, yeah. they get a script and they just type it out. All right, so but maybe if, we're right. Yeah. I'm but okay, I'm sorry. More, it's more for a live element. I, guess. I yeah. was just I just thought it was weird. I just thought like one like the governor of California did it just because. They're like so liberal or whatever, and then like everybody else, like we got to follow up with that, and get our signers up. I didn't know if that was a thing, but yeah, that yeah. makes sense because it's live. It's live, yeah. Anyways, what's your second popular opinion? Um, I hate ice and soda. Ice, ice. boo, ice. Mo- <laughs> yeah, I'm I a hate big especially ice guy. especially ice is great. Especially yeah. loop ice is the deal, like the chunky, the, like the small ice. I the hate. Uh, that I don't like the so small. This is the best ice. No. I hate it so much. Tiny like- crunchy ice. And oh, do you do you eat ice? That's Not what, so much anymore. That's, that's what insane people really do. bad for your teeth. Yeah, insane yeah. people eat ice. Insane people eat ice. I, I, am I used to when I was a kid, but it's like gross. That's how I was um, no, scratching, scratching me off the list. Especially you know I mean? in fountain soda. <laughs> it comes out, it's already cold. What do you need more ice? What do you need ice in there for? It gets colder. And in yeah. fact, I hate drinking my DMDs without ice. Oh, that's gross. I wanted it to be cold. It down. I, I wanted want it to be like freezing. I want cold. to feel the burn. I want to feel the burn. The, the ice just waters it all down. I gotta drink it really quickly, otherwise. Yeah, but you have a thing with drinks. Yeah. Yeah. Drinks in general. Yeah. Like I'm, every time there's a drink, you have a different rule for it than everyone else. Yeah. Like what? Like, like beer. When Anton pours a beer, <laughs> <laughs> shit's so, ridiculous. So I don't know if y'all know this. When Anton pours a beer, it's from like way up here. Yeah. yeah. And he makes as much head as possible. Yeah. yeah. Like literally all foam. And Big then fan of head. He's a very patient person, so yeah. he waits. For all the foam to go down, and then does it again? Whoop. Yep. And until it's pretty much like foamless, and and you say your point is it tastes better, and it gives you you're less bloated. Yeah. Now the thing is because all carbonation is released in the he, beer. He's right. That's the weird part. Yeah. Exactly. Totally I took right. a beer pouring class, he's so I know totally what I'm talking right. about. 
I refuse to try it just based out of just logical cool. fallacy. I no, no, don't. It looks like blasphemy because everyone says you should have like that much head yeah. on top of your beer, like a good inch or two. Yeah, and I'm like, saying and Anton's like whole beer is head, and then it turns into beer. It does turn into I'm beer, and no it releases head, all guy. the carbon. And out you don't of, get bloated, and it does taste pretty good don't get because bloated. you can take because you don't get all the fucking you, carbon like, in there. Eighty year old woman, man, come on. <laughs> I have GERD, man, so I got pre- I got to be careful about what I eat. GERD, yeah, GERD. It's a gastro thing. Yeah. It gives you it just heartburn-y. it's just like constant heartburn. You basically. are an eighty year old woman. If I, I drink water and get heartburn, I'm just saying. That's really? insane. Yeah, that's. I'm just get that it's checked that out. Bad, can't be, I mean, mine was bad for a while, but there were substances that make it worse. So I was like, quit doing. Oh, it. Is, is omeprazole. It? I'm I'm big omeprazole guy. Oh, f- the Zantac thing. Yeah, basically. Yeah. I was eating Tums and Zantac like eh, all the time. Yeah, that's where I'm at right now. I think I quit, well, I quit doing certain other things, and it, it, my heartburn got better. Okay. <laughs> yeah. As well, I, my, my esophageal lining is regrowing. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Come <laughs> on, Steve. <laughs> all right, kids. <laughs> I've got. I've got uh, my last one. Oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna sh- cheers you on that one. That's yeah, that's fucking hilarious. That was pretty good. By the way, if you didn't <laughs> pick up that fucking joke. Uh, I just want to stop you right here. Uh, Beyonce had one of the best music videos of all time. Oh, that's a that Kanye West unpopular? reference. Unpopular opinion. Obviously. How many views does it have? I don't know. I would just it's I watched the, I popular. watched the Kanye West episode on Joe Rogan, and so I just that's what he said on Taylor Swift. Yeah, like, that was she got the so award. Fuck. Have up. you seen that? Have you seen the uh, uh, that video yet with uh, Joe Rogan and Kanye West? It's real no, bad. it's real bad. Yeah, oh, well, I didn't. Oh, I couldn't watch it past like an hour because it was just nonsense. My friend told me it gets good after an hour. Did you Did you watch it? No, I didn't finish it. Because because it's nonsense. It's I just it's impossible to listen to. Guys, are all over the place. Used to negotiate really? with terrorists. I actually don't hate a lot of the stuff he was saying. It's just like you are. It's it's just hard to keep. Like it's it's hard to follow his train of thought. He's, He's got worse all over ADD the place. than Dave Mc, Dave does. It's yeah. insane. Dave's have power. Dave has powerful. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah, it, but that kind of like. I was listening to, I mean, because the greenhouse tracks that I've been practicing lately yeah. uh, are guitarless. Which I is, didn't know. I don't know. No, no, no. It, it, it I don't think that's out. my fault. No, it's no. It shouldn't be anyone's fault, but there. I don't believe in coincidence. So like, the fact that there's no guitar parts was like perfect for me to dial like everything in and be like, this should be here. Like, no, you this, got okay. it. And I like at first I was like, oh man, I can't believe my guitar. I'm like, wait, I'd just be getting in my own way. Well, we'll watch this on Sunday and we'll see how the show. Yeah, goes. proof in the pudding. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think it's I think it's sold out. Greenhouse, I, I think, think is sold did. out. Yeah, we no did good. No big deal. When's the last time you did that? I've never sold, sold out, out last a show. Week. We sold out. We sold out. Fucking Nineteen Four. We did. What did you do this week? <laughs> Trying to build a fucking empire over here. Yeah, it is with the black shirt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you look like Darth Vader. Um, so my last unpopular opinion is uh, avocados are gross. Really? Avocados are great. They're they disgusting. They can be gross if you wait too long. They're, they're always gross. There's not, there's not a scenario in which avocados are good. I tolerate them if 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 they're put on an egg sandwich and it's very very light. I call it a goop sandwich. You put uh, avocado and a fried egg on a, a bagel. Yeah, it's, it's good. Goop sandwich is delicious. Yeah. It's gross. So a little good. bit of avocado and some everything bagel seasoning. I don't you don't even need to mix it up. Maybe some it, cheese, that's it. It's just like it's just like the, 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 the texture, you know. It's like it's like uh it's like beans are the same way. Beans like they just it's mush in your mouth. It's yeah. disgusting. I like the way beans I actually like the way avocados taste. Do you like it's guacamole? The texture, it's gross. I don't like guacamole either. If we're gonna do a condiment thing, I I have one. Like I like mayonnaise. Yeah. I like mayonnaise. It needs to be homemade. Like what? oh yeah, what home, what, what's what's it's the eggs, ingredient? Bro, it's like it's, it's really it's so simple. Yeah, it's mayonnaise just, is so easy. It's eggs and something. I and can't you remember. Realize the first time you make your own mayonnaise that store bought mayonnaise is the wrong move. Yeah. No go. Well, it's like I hated mayonnaise for years. Like most, I feel like I don't know if it's an American thing, but like mayonnaise is like by it's polar. Like people are like, oh, you either hate it or you love it. Yep. Yeah. I I thought it was gross because it was like eggs in a jar, but I started realizing you need it for everything. There's like a million sauces that start with mayonnaise. Yeah. This is just eggs and milk? What is like that? Like aioli, called? right? Aioli has aioli, mayonnaise. Aioli is just mayonnaise plus. It's mayonnaise plus. I, aioli is like my favorite sauce of all time. It's a buzzword. Any kind of. Aioli is a buzzword. It's a buzzword. Aioli is for sure a buzzword. I'm sorry to interrupt. Just want to let you know, aioli is the best sauce that's ever existed. <laughs> You're a sauce. You're the best sauce that's ever happened. It's the best sauce. Of all time. <laughs> you're best I can't do a Kanye West impersonation. Oh, um, all right, trying. what's your unpopular opinion, Steve? <sighs> oh, my God. Okay, so... I think TikTok dances are, like, 
the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my I think, life. I think that's pretty popular amongst our generation. But in general, it seems so popular. It's yeah, like, I it's know. like, how is this such a thing? Like, I think it's like a good way to sell your music these days. I'll say that much. I think oh. they're kind of fun. Yeah. It's just a bunch of kids having fun. I guess. What's wrong with that? Let the uh, kids let have them have fun. fun. Oh, yeah, fine. it's fine. It's just like. That's your own private opinion. That's not my own opinion. I just have to think of something on the spot, and no, I've I been think, thinking about you things. Said good, you actually said something in your previous statement that I know would drive Billy crazy. You uh, said you don't believe in coincidences, and that's I not do not believe in coincidences. Everything happens. I don't either. What do you, you th- so you think everything happens for a reason? Oh, are you a fake guy? No, he says I don't believe in coincidences. Correct. So I don't believe in coincidence. Wait, so, hang on. I'm confused. So you do believe in fate? I think that's what Quinn. I that's think what, shit yeah. like. Well, he says he sh- don't doesn't believe in it. Shit happens whether no. you want it to or not. Coincidences are like that just happened. That's all it is. <laughs> I a am so confused right now. Hang on, I thought coincidence. Billy's brain's break- breaking. Uh, you can hear the strings popping <laughs> yeah. in my head. I thought, I thought <laughs> uh, uh, an working. abstract thought. Fuck. Yeah. No, I I thought a coincidence. A coincidence means that it wasn't fate. A coincidence. Does it? it? Yeah. A co- uh, yeah. Yeah. A coincidence. coincidence like a, right. Like, right. Like, so oh, if something's you, a coincidence, someone it's like ah, it's nothing. It's fine. Oh, someone said. Uh, I've that's never, right. Now, now it's coming back to me. I, yeah. I. Yeah. I only believe in coincidences. There's no such thing as fate. Nothing. Ex- Everything's matters. just random happenstance. Uh, uh. Uh. I don't know if you know this, but we don't exist. Oh, here simulation? We go. Oh no, it's no. not a simulation. What's the theory you were talking about? Oh, here we go. Uh, I like uh, this kind of stuff. Theory. This could it's be another just hour. That consciousness is the evolution of uh, oh, of humanity. It's 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 the uh, uh, the paradox of infinity or whatever. Paradox. Oh, that's like a whole other fucking. But so how does it explain your if infinity? If, explain yourself. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Uh, like like the the. <laughs> I don't agree I, with him. Like but, the. You know. The the thought of uh, 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 alternate universes, okay. like there's like infinite amount of universes, okay. right? Yes. If, if you believe multiverse in that, theory, multiverse. That's right. So if you believe in that, then there's a universe where the multiverse universe theory doesn't exist. Or there's a theory, or, or, or there, there's a universe infinity, where nothing exists. Infinity goes both ways. It goes right. positive and negative. Yeah. Both oh my ways. god. Okay. So uh, it's it's stupid and it doesn't exist. It, everything's finite. First off, and uh, uh, nothing matters. God doesn't exist. And uh, Billy's also an all or nothing. But don't kill yourself because this is all we got. Uh, like I, I'm of the mindset. It is all you got. Yeah. I, 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 Billy's an all or nothing kind of guy. I'm of the mindset where coincidences exist, but it can also be something else. Like, well, sometimes yeah, you have to feel like. Not you don't have to look at every scenario as if coincidence, not coincidence. Yeah, exactly. Like, not everything is like that. It's more like these bigger, bigger moments that you can like sense this sort of like clearly not a coincidence that I left late and didn't get in the car wreck or blah 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 like yeah. type of scenario where if I had if I had just done this one thing like Sean Sean Taunton, great example, decided to go to Dos Gatos for five minutes. During those five minutes, some random car flew through the side of Spliff's I was right there bar. when it happened. Yeah. yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. That's not a coincidence. Yeah. Or so, or, or, or even, even. Probably is. Or, or, <laughs> I mean, or, like, or this goddess is on the way. He or wanted no. to get something to no, eat. No, no. He was at Spliff's. Oh. And then the car went into Spliff's, the f- brief, brief window. Oh, while, while he went to Dos Gatos. Yes. Or, oh, or, that's very interesting. Or also. But <laughs> definitely a coincidence. Or also the fact that, like. Like there, there, there was a, a okay, here, uh, uh, there, there's a festival. There's a festival uh, that 1904 did, uh, like a street kind of festival. They, they did uh, like three years ago or four years ago or something. And uh, the lineup gets announced, and and Sean was like, saw the lineup, was like, man, we, we should be like Ginger Beard should be on that festival. And like talked to Jason and worked it out where they got in the festival. And just so happened in that festival that day was Melody Trucks, and she hired Ginger Beard to be like her her backup band. So oh, ba- right. So a little shit no like coincidence. That. So in they're my the mind, be- they're the best musicians in Jacksonville, and Melody Trucks hired them. That's so, the end of the story. So here's yeah. so here's, <laughs> here's not a coincidence. Here's my take. <laughs> I agree. I mean, it's it's not co- <laughs> I don't know what the coincidence means. It's it's hard for me so to right. discern what, what that means. Here's my take. Here's my take is that yeah, there, there are coincidences. It's frustrating not you. Fate. Things the that frustrate you are stupid, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So my whole my take on it. My take on it is that there's coincidences, and then there's then there's like signs and and intu- omens. In, yeah, omens. Yeah, intuition. Like Mount Gibson. Is, yeah. In, in, intuition is what is the what allows you to decipher between between the two, right? 
It's like 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 whatever like, like being intuitive right. is allow, is allow, is what allows like you to on say, the path off the path. Yeah, that this is this is a sign. I should be I should be reading into what's just happened. What Psychedelics just happened. will amplify that. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like a lot. Uh, I think but it's paranoia and just yeah, that fear that does that for me too. Yeah, and just just not knowing. Uh, no fear. Just what how no things fear. happen <laughs> in the world. Like, um, anyways, uh, it's not it's not always an all or nothing kind of thing. It's like sometimes it can be one thing and also another thing. Well, if not you, everything is anything. Yeah. If you, <laughs> <laughs> that I is, yeah. You got it. You got everything works like structurally to me. So it, it for me it is all or nothing. Yeah. If you start, if you've been like, oh no, that's not how the that world works. That wasn't a coincidence. Though. This is happened by faith. Then everything is that. No, way. no but it's not. Th- it's more gray than that. Yeah. Right. I the don't world's think not. So. The world's not black and white. Because you have to see like why why isn't it's it a gray co- why isn't it a coincidence like uh, because, because it, somebody's in charge of it or who somebody's uh, putting so that like, in there. Well, this is like getting into belief system. Exactly. That's right? what I mean. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to say. Like you have to believe that then there's something else out there. I like going up and up. Up. Not necessarily. So, we should go off of this tangent. We could talk about it off camera, but yeah, it's a yeah, long one. It's, it's but I have like a whole thing on this as well. But anyways, Armic guys, webs. we gotta wrap it up. It's yeah. been awesome having you on, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, it was cheers. fun, right? Thanks for having. That thanks wasn't for boring. Coming up. No, not at all. No, it was great. We didn't know it was cheers, be We tried zero percent. Yeah. <laughs> tried zero what? We didn't try at all for this one because we, <laughs> oh, yeah. we knew it was just gonna fucking be Flow. smooth sailing. So yeah. there's like some you have to think like, what are we gonna say? Yeah, sometimes it's evil just. Blah, 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 blah. Well, and yeah, then we'll we're also like go. really interested yeah, in what they got to do and everything, and just we're not with you, so yeah. yeah. Who cares? <laughs> Back to shit I'm doing is with you, so you don't have I to know, find I out. See, I see you at least like twice a week now, and so it's, uh, I only it's, have six bands, yeah, seven yeah. now. My girlfriend probably eight by the time I get home. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, anyways, guys, it's been uh, it's this has been a great podcast. Uh, thanks for tuning <laughs> in, and make sure you uh, follow our social media stuff. Bottom of the bill on Facebook, side hustle the band on Facebook and Instagram, and all that stuff. Uh, Steve, you got anything you want to plug? Yeah, don't forget to come see Calford December 4th. Don't forget to see Greenhouse on Friday, even though it's probably sold out yeah, already. Yeah, so well, not even that. It's going to air on Sunday. So. After that, but, you know. Yeah, and be on the lookout for Spore and some new projects, Archangel and a couple other things. Archangel, I can't wait to go yeah, see. Yeah, I think there's a Trail Diver show floating around somewhere, too. Oh, yeah. Nice. Well, oh, yeah. Good for yeah. you, yeah. And then, uh, that's I really it. hope I'm not forgetting any bands because they'll be so mad. <laughs> well, I'm good. All right. All right, guys, we'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. Adios, muchachos.